And we say hello. Delighted to see all of you from Ypsilanti on this homecoming Saturday. I'm Michael Regai with my partner, Doug Chapman. You know, both these head coaches stressing sustaining effort and execution for 60 minutes, Doug. Both of them in search of their first MAC win today, and that kind of effort for 60 minutes has been on display already for both these football teams. We saw that in the tight Eastern Michigan win over Northern a year ago in DeKalb, Illinois. Yes, we did. It's going to go. It's going to take a team that plays all four quarters. Both of these teams are very, very evenly matched, and whichever team makes the least amount of mistakes and gets it to the fourth quarter, makes more plays than the opponent, they're going to win the football game. All right. Speaking of plays being made, if you like defensive playmakers, you've come to the right place today. One of the most dominant rush defensive ends in college football Larry English Doug for Northern Illinois 24 and a half career sacks and what a burst to get to the quarterback the burst is an understatement sometimes this kid seems completely unblockable he can turn the switch on he's got a high motor makes a lot of plays in the backfield they have to block him today and Eastern Michigan does to make plays on offense our middle linebackers wrecking machines and Eastern Michigan has one of them Daniel holds clock. you see the career tackle numbers but this is a young man that game just continues to grow for Jeff Jennings. He's gotten better and better every year. You know, he's never missed a game in his entire career. He sets the tone for this defense. He's the leader of that defense. He is what makes this defense run. With him, Eastern Michigan has a good chance in this football game. Their defense is going to have to be stellar because Dan Nicholson is at the throttle of the Northern Illinois offense. It's been most potent in their three outings so far this year. Northern Illinois, Eastern Michigan, don't go anywhere. Key Mac West Division rivalry on ESPN+. Plus. 13 progressive universities. Six diverse states. 23 sponsored championships. More than 100 academic All-American athletes. 11 college Hall of Fame coaches. Millions of dedicated fans. One great conference. The Mid-American Conference. The new mark of excellence. I know this drill. I rack up a big charge on my credit card. I get a tote bag. <laughs> well, actually, with our points program, you can get gift cards, flat screen TVs, even plane tickets. How do you get enough points for that? Oh, all kinds of ways. By using your debit card, your credit cards, checking account. I online. don't believe you. What? You're messing with me, right? No, I'm not messing with you. Can I still get the tote bag? Absolutely. It's not just banking. It's National City. What can I say? It's in my blood. Racing, STP, it really gets me going. Because Marathon Gasoline with STP provides extra cleaning power and helps maintain fuel economy? That's right. I see all Marathon Gas now contains STP additives. See y'all. Remember, pit road speed. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Marathon is proud to sponsor the 2008 MAC Championship on December 5th at Ford Field in Detroit. This afternoon's ESPN Plus Mac football matchup is being brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Also by Taco Bell. Wow, this volcano taco is blazing and it's only 89 cents. By our friends at National City, they're the official bank of the Mid-American Conference. Also by GMAC, proud sponsor of the 10th anniversary GMAC Bowl. By Automart.com, shop smart, buy well. And by the good folks at First Energy, our energy is working for you. A homecoming Saturday, and uh, certainly the uh, the volume meter amped up to greet the arrival of the men in green, the Eagles of Eastern Michigan, coming out of their football facility there in one end zone in Wright Earson Stadium. And uh, you couldn't ask for a, a better, it's like a chamber of commerce Saturday afternoon, about 40 miles from uh, the city of Detroit. Here uh, down I-94 uh, to the west in uh, the state of Michigan, and uh, the weather is just ideal. As we said, about 65 degrees, virtually no wind, and uh, uh, the sun and the clouds will kind of uh, play peekaboo with one another all afternoon long. Now, there's Jerry Kill, the head football coach at uh, Northern Illinois, as we take a look at the game plan for both Northern Illinois and Eastern Michigan, brought to you by National City Bank. Doug Chapman, Jerry Kill, uh, he and his staff have come here from Southern Illinois and uh, made an impression right away with this Northern Illinois program that for so many years was in the great hands of Joe Novak. You know, Coach Novak did a great job with this program. 
you know, they were very successful, had a down year last year. But Coach Kill's coming. You know, he's brought some new air, wants to change things around. And, 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 and the first thing he wants to do is establish the run. He wants to establish the run early. You know, he's got a running back built by committee, averaging 166 a game. You know, not one guy getting the bulk of the carries, but a lot, three guys getting a lot of work. And then also on defense, he wants to, Larry English, he wants to speak English with Larry English. And with Larry English, what I mean by that is getting pressure on the quarterback, getting in the backfield, making plays, and, and, and that's what that's what Northern Illinois has to do. And Jeff Jennick, the head football coach in his fifth year uh, here at Eastern Michigan. Young man who grew up in nearby Milan, Michigan, but uh, all 10 minutes away from this Ypsilanti campus, played college football at Bowling Green in the MAC for head coach Denny Stoltz back in the, uh, the early 80s. And uh, coming off uh, a couple of losses, Michigan State uh, on the road, of course, and then uh, the home loss to Toledo and uh, the loss at Maryland last week. And against all three of those football teams, Doug, Jeff Jennick telling us in the fourth quarter, opportunities to tighten up games and have a chance to sustain momentum and just weren't able to do it. You know, that's what he coaches to his guys. He, you know, sometimes if they're outmatched physically by a team, he tells his team, keep it close into the fourth quarter. And if they can do that, try to make a play and not make a mistake late in the game. You either give your team a chance to win or you keep yourself competitive into the fourth quarter. And this Eastern Michigan football team, uh, the win was, uh, in fact, you look at both these ball clubs, is, uh, that's Kyle McMahon getting ready to go, who has stepped into the quarterbacking responsibilities after the injury to the uh, the starter at the beginning of the season, Andy Schmidt. Uh, what these football teams have in common, Doug, both Eastern Michigan and uh, Northern Illinois with their wins over Indiana State and both big offensive days for both. You know, in Indiana State, they both racked up a, a lot of yards and points against Indiana State. That's their common opponent. You know, but, but both of these teams, they bring a lot to the table. You know, they're, they're different football teams, but they're evenly matched. It's going to be a very, very, very nice football game today. A little more than a year ago in DeKalb, Illinois, uh, Eastern Michigan came back after getting into a, a first quarter hole and beat Northern Illinois 21-19. And Eric Young saved the win by blocking the field goal attempt of Chris Nendek, one of the most outstanding field goal kickers in the nation to save the road win for Eastern Michigan. That ended a run of six consecutive Northern Illinois wins in this series. Yeah, and in that game last year, you know, Northern Illinois was just pounding, running the ball right down the throat. Justin Anderson rushed for over 160 yards, but like we saw with Coach Jennick and company, they preached just stay around to the fourth quarter. If you stay around, keep the game close, you never know what can happen. They get out of there with a win. Ready to go? Very ready. Yeah, absolutely. You should be as uh, Eastern Michigan uh, thirsting as is Northern Illinois. Both these ball clubs, as we said, with already a Mac West Division road loss. Eastern, Eastern Michigan was here at home to Toledo. And a Western Michigan uh, beat Northern Illinois. So settle back and enjoy it. We're all set to go. Danteo Gage and Corey Welch deep. And uh, drilling uh, that kick uh, through the end zone for Northern uh, Illinois. Mike Salerno, and that's going to get the offense of uh, Eastern Michigan out on the football field. And you'll get a look at Kyle McMahon, the young man that uh, is right from nearby Rochester Hills, Michigan. Notre Dame prep had a start versus Maryland last week and threw for 278 yards and a couple of touchdowns against uh, that Maryland Terrapin squad on the road. You know, and, and Coach Jennick raves about this kid's athletic ability. You know, he hasn't been able to show a lot of runs, but when he pulls the ball down and throws on the run, he's just as dangerous as any quarterback in college football. Now they'll run that spread formation. And this first carry of the afternoon is going to go to Terrence Blevins, the 238-pound senior that uh, maybe got one. Let's take a look at uh, the offense of Eastern Michigan. As we said, the run on the spread. Terrence Blevins averaging almost six yards per carry. The receiving court, Dontao Gage and Ja'Cory Stone are the potential home run hitters. Tyler Jones is the underneath receiver. And when you look at T.J. Lang and Andy Fretz, that is the, uh, the senior leadership on that left side of the offensive line, both of them with their 29th consecutive start. Now McMahon off play action. Kyle McMahon came up throwing short on his first floor of the afternoon. It was intended for Tyler Jones. It's going to bring up a third and long. All right, let's flip it over now and take a look at the defensive 11 for Northern Illinois. And this defense ranks second in the MAC in rushing, scoring, and total D. Larry English, an All-American candidate. And uh, he's a young man who was a reigning MVP of the MAC. Tim McCarthy is the, uh, the big hitter at the middle linebacking spot after missing most of last year from injury. And Jerry Kill likes his cornerbacks, both Bradley Pruitt 
and Chase Carter are playmakers from the cornerback spots. Now Kyle McMahon looking at third and long. Let's call it third and 11 with a line to make at the 30 yard line. McMahon with time. Rifles that throw and he got picked off. McMahon was picked off by Brad Pruitt. Well, the first turnover of the afternoon is uh, Northern Illinois being opportunistic. Bradley Pruitt on that corner, Doug. We just mentioned him along with Chase Carter. They're both playmakers, and Pruitt arrived right on time for Northern. You know, and if you watch it, McMahon floats this ball in there, doesn't put a lot of zip on it, and just puts it up there. There's two guys, there's two defensive backs in the area. He comes down with it. Easy interception when a ball is just thrown up there like that. Comes down with it, makes a play. Huge play for Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois now with a chance to play on a short football field after that interception return by Brad Pruitt. So they'll start from the 19 yard line with Dan Nicholson. Nicholson, the 190 pound senior quarterback. They'll run the football with that first carry of the afternoon for Northern. Goes to Montel Clanton, the 195 pound senior. And of course, you know, this running game has been absolutely explosive for Northern Illinois over the course of the last decade. Chicago, the hometown of uh, Dan Nicholson. Of course, uh, all of you that are checking out this Northern Illinois program around the Windy City, very familiar of his high school exploits and thrown for uh, close to 3,400 career yards here with Northern Illinois. He's been solid. You know, they're known to run the football here, but when he's been asked to pass, he's been very, very solid and efficient when he throws the football. Off play action now on second and eight. And pocket closing down, and down goes Brad. Dan Nicholson is Brad Orman, that redshirt freshman, made the hit from his defensive end spot. The Northern Illinois uh, run game features really four tailbacks here. You'll see a lot of Miko Brown and last year's leading ground gainer, Justin Anderson. They don't have Matt Simon today in the receiving court. And Simon, along with uh, Nathan Palmer, have been explosive as wideouts. The offensive line features uh, the junior, Eddie Adamski, the senior, and, of course, and John Brost and also Jason Anyabuaga. They have uh, three starters in that O-line. Now throw that wide receiver screen, and uh, that is caught by wideout Greg Turner. But Turner got put to the ground immediately on the Daniel Holtzclaw hit. Let's take a look at the Eastern Michigan defensive front. And remember, last year it featured Jason Jones, a second-round draft pick at Tennessee. So now uh, you look at Josh Hunt and uh, Brandon Slater to make up for that. Hatchet holds Claw Jermaine Jacobs, an outstanding linebacking core. And uh, Arrington Hicks, a young man that has started to uh, play better football off the corner spot. So get a look at Mike Salerno, who is a perfect six for six. Salerno, this will be from 36 yards. And Salerno has missed his first of the year as he pushed that wide to the left. He pushes it wide. And you know, Eastern Michigan dodges a bullet right there, turn the ball over, but they don't get, but they don't give it new, give any points up to Northern Illinois. So the Bradley threw an interception on that first Eastern Michigan possession does not result in points. Just getting going out of Ypsilanti. Looking for a high interest CD? It's easy to find when you go to the right place. GMACBank.com Where right now our 12 month CD gives you one of the best rates available. So don't wait. Lock it in now at GMACBank.com and earn more while keeping your money safe and secure. Go to GMACBank.com today. GMAC Bank. Smart. Simple. Safe. We have the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of the world's most important manufacturing industry. We have a national television audience on the premier sports network. We have the newest, best football stadium in America. Motor City Bowl 12. Football in Detroit during the holidays. You want to be there. What can I say? It's in my blood. Racing, STP, it really gets me going. Because Marathon Gasoline with STP provides extra cleaning power and helps maintain fuel economy? That's right. I see all Marathon Gas now contains STP additives. See y'all. Remember, pit road speed. Marathon, fuel in the American spirit. Marathon is proud to sponsor the 2008 MAC Championship on December 5th at Ford Field in Detroit. 
All right. Who ate my volcano taco? <laughs> Don't look at me. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Oh. Oh, it was me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? Eastern Michigan able to dodge that early turnover as Mike Salerno, who had been perfect on the field goal opportunities for Northern Illinois, not able to connect. Glad you're with us on this beautiful, just sparkling homecoming Saturday here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. So bring Kyle McMahon out for the second possession. McMahon, as we said, making his fourth career start. He lit it up last year against Northwestern. Now run that wide receiver reverse with the freshman Marvon Sanders and Sanders never got going as that defensive front four caved it down for Northern Illinois as Larry English he wears number 51. You might as well say how do you do to Mr. English all day long and Doug playing with the uh, the thumb injury he sustained in the Minnesota game had surgery in the open week good to go. He's a tough guy as a football player and if you said you better get very very familiar with him he will be in your backfield all afternoon. And Mr. English makes a lot of plays. As you see right there, the best way to stop a run is penetration. They get penetration, shut it down. That's a loss of six now as they try to get Marvon Sanders, that uh, true freshman that Jeff Jennick is very high on going early on. McMahon will keep the football with a lot of real estate. Quarterback Kyle McMahon with a burst out over the 35. That's a first down up to the 36 yard line. That was straight run all the way, Doug Chapman. It, it looks like it was designed run. He drops back, doesn't see anything, and pulls it down. This is what Coach Jennick talked about, his athletic ability, his ability to make plays, pull the ball down, use his legs to make a play, picks up huge yardage, first down for each of Michigan. Chase Carter finally on the stop. So you look at Kyle McMahon. We mentioned the start last year against Northwestern. It was at Ford Field in Detroit. He went 28 of 48, threw for three touchdowns and almost 300 yards through the air. Again, quarterback draw with McMahon with room again. And this time McMahon was taken down by Alex Kuba. Kuba, the linebacker on the stop. But that's near 10 more and close to a first down as McMahon slow to get up. And he's pointing to his right shoulder. They can't afford to have him hurt right now. But you see right now with this spread style of offense, if you have a quarterback that can make plays with his legs, he pulls the ball down, they stretch it out. It's kind of like a zone read. He reads the blocking, gets upfield, picks up yardage. But let's hopefully this injury is not too serious because they are a little banged up at the quarterback position. You're looking at Andy Schmidt, who uh, got the bulk of the quarterbacking work this uh, fourth year redshirt junior a season ago, the starter in 2007. He's been injured during uh, the early portion of the season, and that allowed uh, McMahon to uh, take over the quarterbacking duties for head coach Jeff Jennick. You know, Schmidt was nicked up a little bit earlier in the season, which allowed McMahon to come in and get comfortable with the offense, and now you see him warming up. Hopefully it's nothing too serious because this is a bad quarterback situation if both of these guys are hurt. Well, Doug, let's take a look at this again. As we mentioned, uh, linebacker Alex Kubo wears number 37 right there, put the shot in, and McMahon came up pointing to his right shoulder. He got a pretty good shot on that shoulder from Kubo. You know, it may even be the shot, or it may actually be when he goes to the ground. Sometimes when you go down shoulder first, that shoulder is like an AC joint, and then it can kind of get separated in there. It's a very painful injury. You know, a lot of guys, I had it myself in college. I played through it. But when you're a quarterback, if it's on your throwing arm, it completely shuts you down as a thrower. So you see the Eastern Michigan Athletic Training Staff still working on the 210-pound sophomore Kyle McMahon. So he's on his feet, and we'll keep an eye on him as he'll be attended to on the sideline. But for the time being, it's Andy Schmidt, who again uh, had served as a starter throughout 06, 07, before giving way to McMahon. Here's Schmidt as he comes on the football field. You know, Schmidt's no slouch now. You know, he, he guided this team the past few years, and you know when he's healthy, he's helped each Eastern Michigan to some wins. So they have a lot of confidence in Schmidt going back there, and I'm sure this offense will not miss a beat. Now, a big quarterback, about 240 pounds, uh, really with a big arm for this football team. After a pair of runs by Kyle McMahon, garners a first down at the 46. Now run the football with Terrence Blevins, and Blevins got knifed down. 
That was an outstanding hit that uh, came out of the secondary from Mike Sobel. Sobel wears number 38, and he knifed Blevins down. And Blevins, big fella now, Doug, 240-pound tailback. Good size running back, has good feet, good lateral up quickness, good upfield burst. The way to stop a guy like that is to stop him before he gets ahead of steam. That's the best way. Get him in the backfield. Penetration kills the run. Andy Schmidt throwing the football efficiently, hitting 58% of his throws. Dwayne Priest. Who wears number 22 now, the backup tailback, the 186-pound sophomore is on. And this is Dwayne Priest looking to get to that left edge before he was finally slowed up as he crossed the midfield stripe. So Priest was taken down by Alex Crutch. Crutch, who's one of the defensive tackles in that 4-3. Well, Priest is a change of pace guy. They have him listed at 5'9", 186. That's being a little generous, I think. I'm thinking more 5'7", 170. He's very quick, can get upfield, makes a lot of plays with his feet. All right, that's going to bring up a third down now as you take a look at Dwayne Priest. And this Eastern Michigan football team, they have run the ball wonderfully well. In Eastern Michigan, 35%. They're 11th in the MAC, 19 for 55 on third down conversion. Smith coming underneath. That throw is caught by Dontao Gage, and that's an Eastern Michigan first down. Dontao Gage making the reception. That's his 10th catch of the year, averaging about 11 catches per game with uh, a lot of elusiveness after the catch. You know, nothing fancy, just picking up the first down. You know, Schmidt briefs the defense, finds the open man. The open receiver finds a spot in the zone. Gage catches the ball, gets upfield. That's, good. That's a good sign when your receiver knows where the sticks are, runs his route accordingly, and gets upfield, makes a play. All right, that's the third first down in this drive now. Play action for Andy Schmidt. He's thinking deep. Schmidt to air it out, and it was knocked away by Brad Pruitt. That throw was intended for Tyrone Burke, the third-year sophomore out of Syracuse, New York. And you see they go play action to Blevins, and, and, and he goes deep. He's blanketed in coverage, and the, the fans wanted a little bit of pass interference here. They're not going to get it. He got there maybe a bit early, but he didn't get too much contact on the receiver. Good play by the defensive back. So a big beginning early for Brad Pruitt on that corner. Now second down, it's set up screen with Terrence Blevins, and Blevins got belted as he got near the 40-yard line. That hit came from uh, off the corner by Mike Krause, and uh, Krause also uh, got some help from Corey Hansen. Hanson, the, uh, the red shirt junior linebacker. And Northern is getting a lot of penetration up front. They're, they're actually moving the line of scrimmage into Eastern Michigan's backfield. So plays like screens and draws, you have to hope you get them upfield enough to get underneath them. It's just they're getting off blocks. Northern is not staying blocking and making plays right now. Let's go back to a third and 10, Doug. And right now, Eastern Michigan at just 27% on the year at converting third and 10s, eight out of 30. Andy Schmidt with pressure and that throw that is intended for Tyler Jones. Excellent coverage from Brad Pruitt will fall incomplete. So after three first downs, Eastern Michigan now facing a fourth and long in Northern Illinois territory. Look, Josh Allen comes with a little heat on that play, forces Schmidt to get rid of the ball earlier. The receiver was not out of his break yet, overthrows the receiver. And that's what you got to do on defense is get your defense off the field, get your point return team back on, give your offense the ball back. Speaking of coming back, Zach Jackson is uh, back, and uh, for uh, uh, Zach Johnson, excuse me, Johnson, the the punter who has uh, got a lot of boom in his leg, according to Jeff Jennick. Uh, Johnson going to use that rugby-style kick there, and that football is going to settle down and uh, come to rest at about the 17-yard line. So that's where Northern Illinois will have their second possession of the afternoon. Scoreless as we approach the midway point, quarter number one, homecoming Saturday here at Ypsilanti. I don't know, maybe you should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. Huh? I, I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free Good Hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? Get your career cooking. Literally. Call an affiliate of the Cordon Blue Schools, North America. 
could train as a culinary professional and work as a chef, pastry chef, restaurant manager, and more. Call now, and we'll send you this complimentary career guide. Operators are standing by. Call 800-719-0743. That's 800-719-0743. Mac Football on My 50 Chicago is sponsored by Menards. Save on chamber door, storm, and screen doors now at Menards. The classic split view model features a durable aluminum frame with a retractable screen, only $139. The Regal full view has a two inch thick overlapping frame and nickel hardware, just $155. All of Mana, Whirlpool, and Maytag ranges and microwave range hoods are on sale. This self cleaning smooth top range is only $479. This two cubic foot microwave range hood is only $239. Save big money at Menards. Fox Chicago's push for the Penn and Special tonight after the Cubs Brewers game on Fox Chicago. There are all kinds of obsessive compulsive disorders. The cleaning kind, the touching kind, the perfection kind. Number one, you have some lint on your jumpsuit. But only one man has the crime solving kind. It's a gift and a curse. Monk. Sunday at 9 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. A very devastating loss early on for Eastern Michigan quarterback Kyle McMahon, who looks like he sustained uh, the pads off and an ice pack on it. A right shoulder, that's a throwing shoulder injury on that the run of the football when he was hit by Alex Kuba. All right, Mac fans, for all of your updated Mac football news, scores, and stats, visit Mac Game Day Central. You can find that on Mac Sports.com. Got to visit the good looking Mac website, Mac Game Day Central, your source for Mac Sports. Second possession for quarterback Dan Nicholson and Northern Illinois. It'll start for the 17 yard line and run the football with tailback Amico Brown, the 180 pound true freshman from the state of Mississippi. And Miko Brown has a really burst on the scene with a touchdown and averaging 4.3 yards per carry for Northern Illinois. So Miko Brown is their leading ground gainer right now. Shifty guy, very quick. Well, they use a lot of running backs in this attack, but Miko Brown right now is leading the way out of this backfield. Well, change of pace, Doug. There, Montel Clanton, of course, Justin Anderson, Miko Brown, about 5'6", 180 pounds. Oh, yeah. Just being generous. <laughs> All right, being generous. Huh? He got five, second and five. Nicholson had that pass batted down. Outstanding uh, play off the edge from uh, Eastern Michigan, swatted down by Brandon Downs, appropriately so. The 245-pound redshirt junior. And they teach you a defensive end. They teach you in defense. If you can't get to the quarterback, get those hands up. If they're not chopping you, get your hands up. He gets his hands up. Downs gets his arms up, blocks the ball down. Hey, that's what you got to do on defense. Make plays any way you can. So Dan Nicholson facing a third and five. And again, no Matt Simon today. Simon, along with Nathan Palmer, who wears number 81, have been the, uh, the absolute bellwethers of this pass game for Northern Illinois. As you see there, Conversions on third down. The line to make is up at the 28 yard line. And run the football with Miko Brown. Brown got the push from the left side of that Northern Illinois offensive line. And uh, that's where Jason Anya Buaga and Eddie Adamski, the left guard and center, did the business, Doug, to get out in front of Miko Brown. Well, they run the little underneath read. The quarterback is reading the defensive end at the defensive end. Comes upfield, he gives it underneath. If he crashes down, the quarterback's going to keep it. He gives the ball. Pro proper read, picks up the first down. Pardon, how'd you like to be a defensive coordinator in college football today, looking to stop a spread and all of this uh, tremendously potent wide open offenses in the game? A lot of athletes on the field. It's mm. very difficult for D coordinators. Absolutely. Nicholson off the play fake, wants to air it out, and he got picked off momentarily by Ryan Downer, who then dropped the football. Now, are they saying that play's still alive? Eastern Michigan, after Downer had the interception, evidently, then the football came out. But it was picked up by uh, Eastern Michigan's Kevin Long after the downer pick. And you see, you see Dan Nickel. He doesn't, he doesn't really step through this throw. He can't. He's got a defender in his face. Ball floats on him a little bit. Has a guy open. Safety sitting back playing center field. Comes down with the interception. Gets hit. He gives the ball up. And <laughs> I'm not sure if he had possession of that football when he came down with that interception, but hey, they're, they're not going to look at it. The seventh interception of Ryan Downard's career, this uh, this sophomore, this red shirt. They're going to review that now. And uh, you heard from referee Stan Evans, who is uh, 
in charge of the uh, the Mac officiating crew today. He's going to take a look at review. I don't know, you know, Downer, what do you think? Did he have possession of this football? You know, I, I, you, you couldn't really tell. It didn't look like he got full possession of the ball. I thought it may have been an incomplete interception, but from that angle, it's hard to tell. you got to see from the front if he's bobbling it, if he comes down with both feet. And let's see, he's he's got it. He starts to tuck it away, but I don't think he really has possession. And I hate to use this phrase, a football move. I hate that they, when they say that. But you know, they try to see if he's made a football move with the ball. I didn't really see much. I'm thinking this might be overturned. On the Doug Chapman football dictionary, what to then best describes a football move as you're trying to maintain possession and secure the football, tuck it away. I think what they mean is, that's what they mean is, does he make a significant body gesture to move <laughs> upfield towards the end zone? I'm not sure what the definition of a body football Body gestures, move, all right. But I guess they look for, does he put the ball away, take a step in the opposite direction? You know, that's what they look for is, you know, a step or does he make a move with the ball? Is he tucking it away? I'm not sure if he really even got possession of that football fully enough to make a football move. Now we'll see if that's going to stand. And as we said, uh, Ryan Downard has had a, an outstanding career uh, from his ball hockey free safety spot. When I say career, we're talking about a young man that uh, has already had a couple of interceptions here in 08 after leading freshman in the nation on the interception side a year ago was six of them. So as referee Stan Evans continues to review this from upstairs, we're happy you're a part of uh, this one on this uh, ESPN Plus College Football Saturday in the Mid-American Conference. Northern Illinois and Eastern Michigan, Ryan Earson Stadium on a homecoming Saturday. My partner, Doug Chapman. I'm Michael Regai. Our producer, Tom Domer, director, Matt McCandless, and all of our terrific crew. Well, we, we still wait as uh, Stan Evans still has the headset on as he communicates with the uh, the replay crew that's in a couple of boots down from us here at top right Nearson Stadium. Must be a debate weekend. We had the debate last night, and I, now they're taking a while debating here if this play is going to stand. I like that. You know? You're giving us your, uh, you know, you know, you're very honed in on the uh, political side before the election. Gotta we be. noticed we couldn't get our production meeting going last night because you wanted to watch the proceedings that were going on in the debate as we go back to Ryan Downard. So here's the debate here. Does he get that football tucked away before the Marcus Perez hit that jarred it loose? See, I don't think he has it tucked because you can see he's trying to put it in his right arm. He gets hit from the right. It looks like the hit comes just as he's attempting to put the ball away. So I'm not sure if they're going to. I think I don't want to go out on a limb, but I'm going to do it. I think they're going to overturn this. Yeah, the ruling on the field again that it was an interception by uh, Brian Downard, and then the fumble recovery by his teammate Kevin Long, who advanced the football to the 48-yard line of Northern Illinois. So if it stands, and let's get Stan Evans After right review, now. After review, the pass is incomplete. Northern Illinois retains possession of the football. Second down at the 30-yard line on the left half. So Doug Chapman, maybe there was not a significant football move made by the Chapman Dictionary or whether or not an interception should be held up like that one. You know, one point for me, you know, there's a long season, but I got that one right. I just didn't see, I didn't see him get possession of the football. And, and you know, it's lucky for Northern Illinois that there was, there was a receiver there. Johnny on the spot hits him, jars the ball loose. They dodged a bullet right here. I remember that was a first down throw from Dan Nicholson. So this will bring up second and 10 now from the 30 yard line. That I formation behind Nicholson. This is Miko Brown on the carry on the cutback. And Miko Brown got dragged down by Jacob Wyatt. Wyatt, that strong safety. Jeff Jenick was telling us yesterday he's really, he's, he's asking a lot of his secondary, led by Ryan Downard and Jacob Wyatt at the safety spots. And Wyatt came up to make the hit there. You know, when you have these spread offenses, you ask a lot of your secondary all the time, not only to defend these wide open offenses, but to come up and make plays like this against athletic running backs in space. These guys are dangerous. You have to come up solid, make a tackle, bring him down. You like the looks of Miko Brown, the Whirling? I like him. Yeah. I like him. He's quick, shifty. You know, makes a guy, he makes a guy miss, he can take it to the house. All right, let's bring up a third down now, and we'll call it six. Nicholson will gun that throw, and it is caught very close to the first down sticks by Marcus Perez, 
Perez uh, made the catch. Kevin Long popped Perez out of bounds, and that's a first down, Northern Illinois. And yeah, Perez is able to make this catch, pick up the first down, but it starts with the with the little underneath draw movement. You know, you get the defense. The whole defense is flowing with the run. When you're running the football, even if you're not picking up big yardage, but if you show that you're dedicated to the run, the defense has to respect it. So when they show run action, the defense has to respect it. Dan Nicholson is able to look downfield, make a proper throw, first down. Well, you make a great point about dedicated to the run. How about nine consecutive years of 1,000-yard ground gainers in this program? We'll get into that. Now, this is the wide receiver screen that is hauled in by Greg Turner, and Turner's up to the 45-yard line. Turner got pushed out of bounds by Arrington Hicks, 170-pound sophomore cornerback. And Hicks is down and struggling to get up after he made that hit on Turner. Hopefully it's nothing serious for the young man. But as you see, you know, this is nothing but a but a glorified pitch play to your wide receiver. It's the same as a run. Just give it to your run wide receiver and let him make a play. And you see he gets wrestled down, but it, you know, you pick up three, four yards, it's as good as a run on first down. All right, four wide receiver look now on the second down, and we'll call it five. The line to make is at the 49. Again, throw that bubble route. This is great. Turner, and he's got some room before he was put down. Football came loose. Off that Jacob Wyatt hit for Eastern Michigan. And, and right now, it looks like Northern's getting a little groove with the little mixing it up with little runs, short passes. They'll try to get Nicholson back comfortable after that interception he thrown. And, and, and right now, you see that they're moving the ball, and, and at the end of the play, I'm not, he was down. He was down for that ball, scored it out. Well, again, Jacob Wyatt wears number 21 uh, in on that stop. Jarred the football loose along with Brandon Downs, who had chased from his defensive end spot, but moved those sticks. And remember, this drive started at the 17-yard line for Northern Illinois, so they're on a uh, a smart march right now. As Doug, you said, Nicholson's starting to get a groove. Well, let's listen to Stan Evans right here. I believe they're going to review gonna review that as well. Yes, they are. Wow. Our second large review here. And you see right here, he gets in. He gives the ball up, but is his knee down? Yes, his knee's down. I think before that, you can't tell from there, but it looks like his knee was down when that ball squirts out. See, so turning upfield, he, you know, he should protect that ball with two hands, but you know, he's, he goes down and knee. I believe that knee is down before he gives that football up. So on the Jacob Wyatt hit, the 197 uh, power junior Jerry Kill and his offense looking to uh, be able to withstand maybe another review. It appeared for a moment that uh, Dan Nicholson had been picked off, but that was overturned after the uh, Ryan Downard play. And uh, this angle may give us, there's your right knee down, huh? Before that football popped out. That gives us the most conclusive look at that. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down before the ball became loose. First down. So this eight play 40 yard drive uh, right at the moment is going to continue inside the five minute mark. So uh, a couple of reviews again uh, certainly uh, that have been uh, gone to the advantage of Northern Illinois here. Yeah they've, they've dodged a couple bullets now and, 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 and right and right now hopefully they can get some points out of this. Out of the eye formation now and this uh, first to ten from the 43 yard line. Run the football with Miko Brown, and he'll explode into that second level. Miko Brown uh, finally pulled down by strong safety Jacob Wyatt again, who made the stop. So Miko Brown, true freshman out of Mississippi. Now, you know, spread offense, you know, is, is what's the new Vogue thing now in college football. But hey, Northern Illinois, they're known to run the football. They'll line up in an I formation, turn around, let your fullback lead through, get an ISO block on that linebacker, let your running back hit the hole, get north and south. That's what they've done here in the past. And you see they don't go too far away from it from time to time. Miko Brown got 11, going to continue to run Miko Brown. So a, a steady dose of work for the 180-pound true freshman. He wiggled inside the 30-yard line where Brandon uh, Downs was in on that stop. There's Downs, who wears number 17. A little bit undersized for a defensive end and wearing that non-conventional defense. What's he doing wearing number 17, a down lineman in a 4-3? Most likely a guy his size came into the safety and <laughs> ate himself out of that position and moved to another spot. <laughs> ah, too much at training table, huh? Oh, yeah. Second at seven, Nicholson will throw that bubble screen again. Greg Turner made the reception, and Turner was uh, wrestled to the ground as he was taken down by uh, 
Eastern Michigan's uh, safety, and that was uh, Chris May. May made the stop coming in to, on Turner. And you see right here the, the run action kind of slows the linebackers down a bit. And you see Turner just gets the ball. Hey, it's nothing fancy. It's not a huge pass play, but it moves the sticks. That's the thing. It doesn't. It, if you throw these little bubble screens and short screens, the same as getting a run, a three to four yard play, from a run play is a positive play on offense. And don't forget Greg Turner taking the place of Matt Simon, who is not on the trip today with an injured foot and averaging 19 yards a catch. As uh, now we're going to get an Eastern Michigan timeout. It'll be their first here in the opening quarter with Northern Illinois on the move against Jeff Jennings defense. All right, we'll see what uh, Dan Nicholson uh, has in store for that Eastern Michigan defense as this drive continues. Still scoreless, late first quarter in Ypsilanti. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-Sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-Sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-Sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-Sports.com. NCAA football crosses the border for the third year in a row with the International Bowl, bringing the U.S. college football experience to Canada in a big way. Postseason bowl game action with great marching bands, cheerleaders, and dance teams. It's a team from the Big East versus a team from the MAC. The International Bowl crosses the border January 3rd, Rogers Center, Toronto. For tickets, go to internationalbowl.org or ticketmaster.ca. You don't want to miss it. What's my car X factor? Brakes, tires, oil, engine repair. I need someone who does it all and does it right. Get Car X brakes from just $89. That's $89 installed only at Car X. Don't be afraid of the pump. The new Accord from Honda. Go to shophonda.com to build and price your own fuel efficient Accord. What's my car X factor? For my car repairs, I go to someplace I can trust, where they know my car and my name. Now get a 1999 oil change with a free tire rotation. Don't worry, call the car X man. Back inside right near some stadium in Ypsilanti, very key Mac West division battle here on ESPN Plus. And it's a very strong uh, drive going on for uh, Northern Illinois. Jerry killed his first year, but Joe Novak in the Mac football games, 32 and 16, and it's a look at 16 and 9 on the road for this Northern Illinois program since 2002. And uh, this is a football team that could always go on the road and win part of the big success of Joe Novak's program. Now go right back to Miko Brown, and Brown is to the house. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Miko Brown on that inside delay, 26-yard burst to the end zone to get Northern Illinois on the board. Second TD of the year for the true freshman out of the state of Mississippi. 26 yards. Un he didn't get touched until he was five yards in the end zone. They tackled him on the wrong part of the field. And did you see this underneath the draw? The linemen come off the ball, give him a great seam. He gets north and south, uses his speed, gets to the end zone. Great play. That's a pair of seniors, the right guard Dan Keller and the right tackle John Brost, that really uh, were road graders and clearing the way for Miko Brown. Dan Salerno now perfect 13 for 13 on PATs and it's Jerry Kill and the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Look at the blocks from right guard Dan Keller and right tackle John Brost. And then you see Adamski coming around and he, he knew it was touchdown. He throws his hand up. You know, those big, those they call the big uglies up front. You know, those big guys, they, they love it when they spring their running back. For, they don't get a lot of credit. They don't get their name in the paper, but it can't happen without the big lineman up front. They give him a nice crease. Running back does his job. Gets north and south. Touchdown. Hey, how big were those two overturned calls on that drive for Northern? Enormous. Because they get points Enormous. out of it. And they kept the football. Yeah. Well, how about this drive? I mean, you go you, you 12 plays and go 83 yards. As you said, it started on the 17-yard line. 
And Miko Brown with his second touchdown of the year. So last year we saw the likes of uh, uh, DeAnthony White here at Eastern Michigan break on the scene as an all-purpose guy. And of course uh, we think of Antonio Brown at Central Michigan for Butch Jones. And now Jerry Kill may have the same thing in Miko Brown. If you look at college football, you know that's the that's the new thing with these spread offenses is you have a back that's maybe on paper not the most physically imposing guy, you know, yep. 5'10", yep. 180, 190 guy that can get that can catch the ball, can block when necessary, sure. but is quick enough to hit that home run, that quick hitter, and and, and that's what it's if you, have, if you have a back on your team, you can spread the field. That guy gets one crease, no one's going to catch him. Listen to you, Chapman. I you're salivating talking about backs with an opportunity to be all-purpose guys. I understand. As Mike Salerno again booms that football through the end zone and out of play over the heads of Dontao Gage and Corey Welch. So Salerno uh, with uh, one of those real lively legs, as we said, he's put Chris Nendek last year, All American. A field goal kicker for uh, Northern Illinois. Salerno has come in and been terrific for him. You know, when you follow a guy with the credentials as Nendek, you have to, you know, you got big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he's thus far, he's done well. He's done a solid job. He's done what they've asked him to do. And, and I'm, I'm sure he hopes he can follow and be the next All American here at that position. Now Eastern Michigan, the 83 yards of total offense as a quarterback Andy Schmidt is back out to run this offense after the starter, Kyle McMahon, was hurt. The run of the football is uh, Dwayne Priest on that first down carry. Priest, who's averaging better than five yards per carry. This Eastern Michigan run game has been uh, very, very prolific here in the first four football games of the year. You know, and, and it's been led by Blevins. You know, he's got three, over 300 yards in the season, and he's leading the team in touchdowns with five on the year. And then they switch it up with Dwayne Priest, who can, like I said, he's one of those home run hitter backs, a smaller guy, can get north and south and make you miss. That's what you need, a change of pace guy. He provides that for this team. Mr. Michigan average at 211 yards per game on the ground, leading the back. Andy Schmidt is on time with that throw as it's caught by Ja'Cory Stone, the young man from that tremendous Glenville High School program under Ted Ginn Sr. in the city of Cleveland. So that's Schmidt's first connection, second connection, this one to Ja'Cory Stone. And you see they, they, they run play action here, and they have you know, great offensive line protection form a perfect pocket around the quarterback. Who really doesn't have anyone in his face until he releases the ball, makes a nice throw to the flats, and picks up the first down. Brad Truitt made that stop on Ja'Cory Stone, so Andy Schmidt, Starter for the last couple of seasons, replacing the injured Kyle McMahon here early. Schmidt off play action, and he threw that pick. It was intercepted. Picked off by linebacker Tim McCarthy. Well, McCarthy said, look what I've got. The middle linebacker, I don't know if Schmidt ever saw him as McCarthy was really just uh, set down right in the middle of coverage. And you love to see it. You love to see these defensive guys get the ball in their hand. He was kind of maybe a delayed blitz like he was playing the, the, the running back man. And he comes and the ball, he throws the ball directly to him. And he's like, wow, ball, ball's here. <laughs> what do I do? I just take off running. Those big guys, they love to get the ball in their hand. They want to they turn up the field like running backs. And, you know, great play by the young man. That's a second very costly turnover. Brad Pruitt and now Tim McCarthy, the middle linebacker with Northern Illinois interceptions. And you talk about playing on a short field, huh? Dan Nicholson will start from the 11-yard line. Miko Brown on the cutback, not this time. Well, Miko Brown got greeted by the right side of that Eastern Michigan defensive front, Brad Orman and Josh Hunt. In on the stops as uh, we approach the 62nd mark left in this opening quarter with Northern Illinois already with a 7 nothing lead and looking for more. This is how that they forced out to a quick 10 nothing lead last year in DeKalb before Eastern Michigan finally got back into the game. You know, we talked about he got to play a full 60 minutes in football. You can't just come out and play one quarter. That's what they did last year. They have to sustain this for four quarters to win this football game. I call it second down and eight. Now the direct snap to Demarcus Grady. Grady inside the five. Did he get to the end zone? Yeah, he did. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Demarcus Grady, the redshirt freshman. They love to go to his package out of the spread. Out of the shotgun in the red zone. And, and, and once again with these spread offenses, an athletic quarterback can make plays like this. He pulls the ball. He's big, he's a running back right now. When you've got a guy who can throw the ball, but when he runs, has the same ability as a running back, that is extremely dangerous. And right now they have Eastern Michigan reeling. Right now offensively, Northern Illinois is doing whatever they want to do. 
Oh, Andy Dittmenner on the hold as Mike Salerno looking to add his second PAT here in the last uh, minute plus, and he'll do that. Though Eastern Michigan's got to regroup because the Huskies of Northern Illinois, they are growling now as defensively they've been very opportunistic this afternoon as Demarcus Grady going to the end zone. His third rushing touchdown. You know, Coach Kill loves this guy because, yes, he can throw the football, but he provides an, another element from the quarterback position, a quarterback that when he gets the ball in his head, can pitch it, hand it off, throw it, or he can run it just as effectively as a running back. So they love this kid here. Doug Chapman, if you're Jeff Jennick, the uh, fifth-year head coach of Eastern Michigan right now, again, you want to start fast. You know, we talked about that with Coach Jennick yesterday. That ground game has been good for him this year in the first four. Where's he going with his kids right now in terms of handling this early adversity? It depends on how dedicated he is to the run. You know, if you're a running team, and that's what you do, even if you're down by two scores, it's early, you stay with the run. They got a couple calls early in this game that, that didn't go their way. I'm sure he's a bit frustrated, but right now, you know, you have to stick with your bread and butter. They're not out of this football game. They've got three quarters of football left to play. They haven't even gotten into a groove yet, so I think he just wants to get his offense into a groove, stop turning the ball over, and they'll be fine. Yeah, you saw uh, some of the... Uh, the resume of uh, Jeff Jennick and he started at Eastern Michigan for EMU football alumni group. We'll get into that a little bit later on through the course of the afternoon. Is this one returnable for Dante Gage? He's going to come out from a couple yards deep. A Gage with a nice return to the 24 yard line. Dante Gage, who has had an excellent career returning kicks for Eastern Michigan. Trumaine Riley, the all time kick return leader of this program. Riley. Uh, back from the, the early part of this decade, Dante Gage fourth in career kickoff returns. So Andy Schmidt, how does he shake off that bad pick he just threw down? First thing he needs to calm down, have a short memory. You know, forget about what he just did. Come out, run the football, and they've just got to they've got to do what they do. Don't don't play outside yourself. Let your playmakers make plays. Just relax back there. You just saw Kyle McMahon now throw that bubble screen, and that's caught by Tyler Jones. Short game. Maybe for a couple. Look at this Northern Illinois defense, Doug. They are absolutely jazzed up now, jumping around after they've come up with the two picks in the opening quarter. They're playing with a lot of swagger. You see the coaches patting the guys on the head. They're gang tackling, running to the football. And they throw this little this little short pass here to the outside. You see one, two, one, two, three, four shirts around the football. And when you're gang tackling, swarming, your defense is playing, everybody's jacked up. They've got the momentum on their sideline right now. Yeah, as you look at uh, Alex Crutch, uh, you saw the numbers that they held Indiana State to last year. That quick throw is snapped off by uh, quarterback Andy Schmidt and caught by Ja'Cory Stone. Stone, who leads this ball club. Uh, Stone with a couple of receptions this afternoon. And uh, now Ja'Cory Stone with 24 catches on the year as we wind it down in the opening quarter. It's an opening quarter that uh, showed Eastern Michigan turning the football over a pair of times. Only one cost them. That and a long sustained 12 play drive has Northern Illinois with the best of it. 15 minutes of football in the books. We'll bring you back to Ypsilanti coming up in a moment. Northern Illinois with a 14 nothing first quarter lead. Understand. Okay. With your new Elite checking account, right. we pay the ATM fees that you get charged by other banks. Make sense? No. Well, you know how other banks charge you ATM fees, right? Yes. Well, we take care of those. You take care we of We pay them. You pay them? People seem to like it. It's not just banking. It's National City. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world-class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands-on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. What can I say? It's in my blood. Racing? 
The STP, it really gets me going. Because Marathon Gasoline with STP provides extra cleaning power and helps maintain fuel economy? That's right. I see all Marathon Gas now contains STP additives. See y'all. Remember, pit road speed. Marathon, fuel in the American spirit. Marathon is proud to sponsor the 2008 MAC Championship on December 5th at Ford Field in Detroit. If you have been hurt at work, call the law offices of Dworkin and Mascherello. We secured millions of dollars in settlements annually for our clients. Please call 1-888-460-4878 for a free consultation. We have the experience in that we have represented clients for over a combined 33 years in work injuries. Experience the difference with Dworkin and Mascherello. If there is no recovery, there is no charge. Call 1-888-460-4878 now for a free consultation. Unconventional. If you're wrong, he'll end up with no hands and no feet. Uncaring. Technically, if I'm wrong, you'll end up dead, but I take your point. Unbelievably brilliant. You, you, you. When your life is at stake. And nobody knows anything, huh? Then how is it you always think you're right? I don't. I just find it hard to operate on the opposite assumption. He's your best bet. See, it is shocking. House, the cure for the common weekend. Sundays at 5 on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. Trivial Pursuit, America Plays, weekdays at 3 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. Now you're watching Mac Football on ESPN Plus, presented by our good friends at Marathon. 15 minutes of football in the books. Northern Illinois with a 14-0 lead on a couple of touchdowns from Nico Brown and Marcus Grady. Let's take a look at our Marathon Fast Stats. <laughs> you know, plays in the opposition territory. Northern Illinois uh, with eight of them in uh, that opening quarter. So Andy Schmidt now looking at a third and five. We're going to throw that middle route, and it is caught by Tyler Jones, who stretched out, and he's got a first down. Excellent move by Tyler Jones as he was able to find that first down sticks as he was being brought to the ground by Mike Sobel. Tyler Jones uses all of his six foot two frame to get this first down. You know, great awareness by the receiver. Knowing when you catch the football, you have to get upfield. He gets upfield, picks up the first down. Doug, how important of a drive is it for Eastern Michigan here? At least get some sustain and some points on the board. Yeah, they have, they have to. No matter how you do it, they have to get something, preferably a tuck down, but they have to do something. They've got to first get in their opponent's territory. Yeah, and they've, they've got to score points. Four and eight football team that has lost their quarterback. Look at the time for Andy Schmidt. Going to lay that out for DeAnthony White. But White was in nice coverage by Mike Sobel. Sobel, that, uh, that strong safety. But there, Andy Schmidt had all kinds of time to deliver the football. You know, the offensive line, they're doing their job. They're protecting their quarterback. The receivers now just have to find a way to get a little more space so that the quarterback can find a hole to put the football in. You know, Schmidt doesn't want to doesn't want to float it up. He just, you know, he overthrows this one. He could have put a little less air in it. May have been a catch with football. But, hey, the, the offensive line is doing their job. Tighten a few things down. The passing game will pick up. Three wide receivers now for Andy Schmidt. He's looking at a second down and 10. Dwayne Priest offset with him in the backfield. And run the inside delay, and this is Dwayne Priest. Priest got met by that Northern Illinois linebacking core. As in on the stop was Alex Kuba. Kuba who put the hit on Kyle McMahon that forced him out of the football game. And of course, Larry English, number 51, a young man who you look at uh, some of the uh, the award watch lists he's on this year. Just uh, amazing. Lombardi, Nagurski award list, reigning MVP in the MAC right there. Vern Smith award winner from a season ago, Larry English. Well, he's not a big guy. He was 6'3 by 255, but yeah. Dwight Freeney's not a tall guy. OCU Manure is not a tall guy. That's right. You know, but they make plays. Yes, they do. Now Schmidt feeling some heat from the backside from Larry English. Dumped that football off. Caught by his uh, wide receiver is making the grab for Eastern Michigan. Was Marvon Sanders making the catch? And that's a first down for Eastern Michigan. And just when we talk about Larry English, he makes a play, gets upfield, and tries to bat the tackle his hands down. He just keeps coming. A lot of defensive ends, once they get that far upfield, won't collapse down. He collapses down into the pocket, you know, pressures the quarterback, almost comes up with a sack right there. Presence of mind from Andy Schmidt. Now go back to the ground game, trying to get that corner turned as Terrence Blevins, the big 240-pounder. And uh, Blevins was a knife down 
on that Northern Illinois hit that came from uh, Josh Allen, that linebacker on that left side. You no, know, right now Eastern is just, you know, they're trying to find plays that work. Nothing fancy, not trying to go downfield if, if they don't have to. Just trying to pick up first downs, move the ball, and like I said, get into their opponent's territory. They're right at midfield right now. They're trying to get on the other side of that stripe to possibly get some points out of this. Eastern Michigan averaging over 200 yards with the ground game this year, but it hasn't come easy. Terrence Blevins with a strong move as he got to the corner and then got turned north-south, and he's very close to a first down inside the 45-yard line as a Blevins. Boy, needed, uh, needed seven, and he's real close to getting seven, and referee Stan Evans is uh, going to take a look at this and get the sticks out to measure. And you see earlier in the game, Northern Illinois was getting a lot of penetration into Eastern's backfield, not letting the running backs get started. Right now you see the Eastern Blevins is getting, he's getting started. Once he gets north and south, a guy his side, he's going to move the pop. And that's what they're doing. They're picking up yardage on the ground right now. Look like they're hungrier right now. They know they're behind. They need some points. We're inside right near some stadium here in the campus of Eastern Michigan University. Mac football on ESPN Plus alongside Doug Chapman. I'm Michael Regga along with our very talented uh, Mac production team. Northern Illinois with the two first quarter touchdowns. As we have uh, just gotten things geared up here at quarter number two with this Eastern Michigan drive for that man, the head coach Jeff Jennick. Now in his fifth season, grew up uh, nearby just a uh, a well, long genic touchdown throw away since he was a quarterback in college down at Bowling Green here in Milan, Michigan. Now run that wide receiver reverse again. That's Marvon Sanders and the freshman got upended. Josh Allen who wears number nine again in on that stop and Allen has been very active. He can run from sideline to sideline and Jerry Kill said this might be my most complete linebacker Josh Allen. And this you know, and, and this is what you do there. This wide receiver Underneath reverse play is a big play in Eastern Michigan's offensive playbook, but the, th the way to get it is penetration. These, these linebackers are staying home, getting upfield shoulder, keeping everything inside of them and getting into the opponent's backfield, and Josh Allen makes a huge play right there. That's going to bring up a second down at 12 now. That line to make is down at the 34-yard line. Schmidt on that quick throw, and he's got his tight end, big Josh LaDuke, who made the grab. But LaDuke got belted to the ground immediately after he had made that catch as Melvin Rice came up to make the stop. Quick pass, quick pass to the tight end, right to the flats. But Rice is right there on the spot, brings the big fella down. Right now, right now, Eastern's got to get it. They got to sustain some type of drive right now, which they're doing. And hopefully they can get points out of it. Northern has to, you know, bow up a little bit, stop this drive right now. Eastern Michigan not bad today. Three for five on third down conversions. This one is a big one, though, third and eight. Set up screen to Ja'Cory Stone, and oh, did he get popped. Ja'Cory Stone got belted by nose tackle Mike Kraus as he came up about four yards shy of that first down. It looked like it was there for the first down, Doug. I tell you, my, my running back coach in the Minnesota Vikings once told me on screen, so when you catch the screen, don't go that far back inside because those big boys are running towards you. He said, stay where your shirts are. He Feel he, the thunder. He huh? went one step a little into it, two into it, four too much, took a big shot right there. Well, Eastern Michigan, Jeff Jennings said with his football at the 36-yard line, it'd be a 53-yard attempt from here. Doesn't have that kind of leg with uh, Joe Carithers. And uh, now Eastern Michigan is going to take a timeout on a fourth and three to talk about this. Very, very critical fourth down coming up. Eastern Michigan down by a couple of touchdowns, Doug. Desperately needs a conversion here. We'll discuss that more when we get back. Andy Schmidt started the day as the backup to Kyle McMahon, who went down with an injury. He's got Eastern Michigan on the move. I don't know. Maybe you should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. Huh? I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free Good Hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? Looking for a high interest CD? It's easy to find when you go to the right place. GMACBank.com Where right now our 12 month CD gives you one of the best rates available. So don't wait. 
Lock it in now at GMACBank.com and earn more while keeping your money safe and secure. Go to GMACBank.com today. GMAC Bank. Smart. Simple. Safe. Store your mowers, wheelbarrows, and more with a storage building from Aero and Menards. The 10 by 8 Hamlet is $249. The 10 by 12 Arlington is only $359. Both include a metal foundation kit. Protect trailers, boats, or cars with a VersaTube galvanized steel structure. They feature slip fit connectors for easy assembly. A 12 by 20 foot model is $979. Or get a 20 by 20 foot for $1,499. Save big money at Menards. They say you never forget your first time. My daughter is planning on giving you her virginity, and I would consider it a personal favor if you wouldn't take it. On Wisteria Lane, it's always better the second time around. So how are you? And the third, and fourth, and fifth. Do you think you could stop by later tonight and take a look at my pipes? Desperate Housewives. Saturday and Sunday at 6 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. 14-0 Northern Illinois, but Eastern Michigan on the move, but looking to convert a key fourth down. A lot more exciting Mid-America Conference college football action comes your way October 4th. Chris Jackumain and uh, the quarterback for the Akron Zips travel to face Eugene Jarvis. Hope he's healthy at tailback of the Golden Flashes of Kent State Saturday, September, uh, make it October 4th at noon. And it's only from ESPN Plus. Doug Chapman and I will be there. And that's Kyle McMahon, arm in a sling, Done for the day, obviously, helmet and pads off. Tough blow for Eastern Michigan, but of course, Andy Schmidt has been a two year starter for this ball club. He needs to convert a fourth and three. Schmidt gonna put that football in his pocket, and that Northern Illinois defense swarmed all over him, led by Larry English. English, who made the stop. And got some help from middle linebacker Tim McCarthy as well. The thing about Larry English, you know, from being an offensive player my entire football career, you have to always know where, where a guy like him is. And what happens is, is you have too many guys blocking one man and not enough guys blocking other guys, and everyone else starts making plays. A guy like Larry English is going to make a lot of plays. You know, he gets in the backfield, makes the quarterback step up, feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. gets up, and, and he, he pulls the ball down, and he's short on the scramble. And that's what he'll do to you. And he's got a variety of moves, too. He can he can go with the explosion off the outside, but Doug, from what I've been told, he can go through you, too, yeah, yeah. on bull rushes if he, necessary. He will, he will bull rush you. Well, look at his first down carry from Montel Clanton. That opened up beautifully on that left side with Eddie Adamski, the center, and Jason Anye Buaga, the left guard, and Montel Clanton had the big, big trip into Eastern Michigan territory. You could have driven the team bus through that hole. The offensive line comes off the ball, get on their man, move to the second level. The second level is the linebackers. They move the First linebackers. Down, Clanton just does a great job finding the seam. This is great to see. This kid had two, two blown out knees. Yep. And he comes back. It's good to see him back out there. Yep. He uh, claimed the starting spot from Justin Anderson. Now after the big run for Clanton, play action. And that throw is caught by tight end Reed Cunningham. Cunningham carrying green shirted Eastern Michigan defenders down inside the 10. Beautiful play action with the throw to tight end Reed Cunningham. We talked about it. When you can run the football defensively, you have to respect the opposing team's play action. When they when they show run, you have to. Run sucks the linebackers down. The defensive backs are already backpedaling. There's a huge void behind from where the linebackers were to where the secondary is. That's where the tight ends roam. They make big catches and pick up big chunks of yardage. And you see it right there. Now after the big hookup from uh, Nicholson to Cunningham now first a goal from inside the 10 run the football off that right side with that tailback Montel Clanton Josh Hunt made the stop. The young man uh, for Eastern Michigan wears number 91 there's Josh he transferred from Colorado. Now how about if you're Josh Hunt and you played next to Jason Jones all last year the second round draft pick at Tennessee and now you're so okay big fella now it's your turn to carry this defensive front four. Yeah I'm sure Jones took a lot of pressure off him getting a lot of double teams and I was allowing him to run around and make a lot of plays now he's probably the guy they're watching now getting the double teams so you know it's when you got to step your game up you know and, and he's playing well he's been solid down there in the trenches for Eastern Michigan. Sure. All right second and six now after that uh, four yard carry from Montel Clanton Nico Brown back at the tailback spot. Nicholson off play action look at end zone Cunningham couldn't get there 
and we've got a late flag, and that might have been a late hit on Dan Nicholson as uh, coming on that blitz from the corner for uh, the Eagles of Eastern Michigan was Jermaine Jenkins, the linebacker. And once again, the play action draws the linebackers down, gets the entire D-line moving. Personal foul. Roughing the pass around the defense. Foul is penalized half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And he, and he had his tight end. He had him earlier. He threw the ball a little late, but Eastern Michigan shoots themselves in the foot, hitting the quarterback late, getting unsportsmanlike. Can't have that. Yeah, Jermaine Jacobs, and this is a very fine linebacker crew. And Jermaine Jacobs maybe is a top special team player for Jeff Jennings Ball Club. It's going to bring up now. First down for the three and go back to Miko Brown. And Brown got belted as he got inside the two yard line by Kevin Long, the sophomore cornerback who wears number four, came up to lead the charge. All right, let's take a look at our Automart.com scoreboard. Well, Ball State, huh? How about Nate Davis and crew? And, of course, with the just absolutely tragic loss of Dante Love. But they've got a 14-0 lead at Kent State. And, of course, Western Michigan and Philadelphia today to battle Temple, while both Akron and Ohio step out of conference. Big one up at uh, Mount Pleasant with Buffalo and Central Michigan headlining the games that start later on today. Miko Brown looking to get to the corner, not going to get there as Eastern Michigan's defense, Andre Hatchett, first time we called Hatchett today. Hatchett wears number 20 from Warren Central High School in Indianapolis, third leading tackler on this ball club last year. He's a good one, uh, Doug, and it's the first time we've talked about Andre today. He does a good job, but you want to, we're down here when everything's so condensed in this in this goal line area, you want to get the running back running east and west. That's what they do, they get Clanton to bounce it, doesn't get his shoulder square, stutter steps. That's what you want, you get a guy going side to side, it's easier to bring him down. And you see the fine form tackling there from Andre Hatchett on Miko Brown, so that's going to bring up a third down and two. He, this drive was kept alive and uh, certainly uh, added on to with that roughing the passer hit on Jermaine Jenkins. As you look at Josh Hunt and this Eastern Michigan defense, they'll talk with Jeff Jennick. Northern Illinois offense over to have a chat with Jerry Kill. Northern Illinois trying to enhance their already two touchdown lead. They're knocking on the door when we come back to Rhinerson Stadium in Ypsilanti. What can I say? It's in my blood. Racing, the STP, it really gets me going. Because Marathon Gasoline with STP provides extra cleaning power and helps maintain fuel economy? That's right. I see all Marathon Gas now contains STP additives. See y'all. Remember, pit road speed. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Marathon is proud to sponsor the 2008 MAC Championship on December 5th at Ford Field in Detroit. All right, who ate my volcano taco? <laughs> Don't look at me. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Was me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? This is the all new Honda Pilot crossover. What sets it apart is Honda's innovative variable cylinder management system. Simply put, the six cylinder engine is programmed to run seamlessly on as few as three cylinders, offering you greater fuel efficiency. What else would you expect from Honda, the greenest automaker in America? The all new eight passenger Pilot. Get APR financing as low as 0.9% on all new 2009 Honda Pilots for well-qualified customers. This fall is all new on My Network TV. The Masked Magician returns, this time with an all new series. Magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. Where no secret is safe. Then, comedian Tony Rock exposes America's everyday stereotypes. Watch out, America. I'm coming after you. Plus, My Network TV is the new home of Friday Night SmackDown. Friday Night will never be the same. This fall on My Network TV. Northern Illinois knocking on the door for head coach uh, Jerry Kill, who actually uh, had a a victory early in 07 over Joe Novak and uh, Northern Illinois as he took his 
Saluki's from Southern Illinois uh, up north in the state. And got the win, 34-31. Coming up at halftime now, the studio crew is going to take a look around the Mid-American Conference. We'll take a look at uh, that Ball State football team and check out Brady Hope. Look at the Mac scoreboard. First half highlights. Doug and I will do that for you. Halftime from a homecoming Saturday in Ypsilanti. Stay tuned for that as well, Jeff Jennings chatted with his defense. That's Dan Nicholson as you get inside the thoughts of this Northern Illinois quarterback. Third down and goal from the two-yard line. And run the reverse to Marcus Perez trying to get to the flag. Did he get in? Yeah, he did. Touchdown, Marcus Perez, Northern Illinois. A great athletic move by Perez. On the, he's going out of bounds. He sees that the defenders have the angle on him. Stops his feet and just sacrifices his body, throws his body inside the pylon. Great move. Doug, what do you think, though, about running long stretch reverses down in the goal line like that? I, I, I guess you look at it where you, if you have confidence in those guys and you have confidence in your team. But unusual, you though. Very unusual. Very, I mean, a play that takes a long time to develop going east-west. Not a popular call. Yeah. But if it works. But it works. It works. It's a good one. You the, put the, a star by exactly. it, right? Yeah. All right, Max Salerno to add the PAT after the 65-yard drive that was capped off on the two-yard TD run on the reverse from Marcus Perez and Jerry Kill again, who for five straight seasons took his Salukis of Southern Illinois to the FCS Football Championship Subdivision Playoffs. Ran the reverse on the goal line. Marcus Perez got to the corner. 21-zip, Northern Illinois. Fundamentals. <laughs> Technique. Fun. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Character. Excitement. Strengthening the foundation of college football. One kid. One kid. One kid. One kid at a time. Progressive universities, six diverse states, 23 sponsored championships, more than 100 academic All American athletes, 11 college Hall of Fame coaches, millions of dedicated fans, one great conference. The Mid American Conference, the new mark of excellence. We repair, we restore, we renew. We just want you back together. Mako, America's body shop. Right now, Mako is painting bumpers for $99. Car looks new, but your bumper doesn't? Mako will paint your bumper in one day in most cases and give it a lifetime warranty, all for $99. Bring your car to Mako. We'll get it done fast. We'll get it done right, and we'll get it done for less. We just want you back together. But hurry, offer is for a limited time only. Weekdays, catch the game show that keeps it all in the family. Are you ready to play the feud? It will surprise you. Something that you would do to prepare for a game of strip poker. It will shock you. I'm sure there's some women there. <laughs> and it will prove once and for all... Something that tires out your husband. Whose father knows less. Constant nagging. Watch America's favorite game show with host John O'Hurley. Seems pretty simple to me. We're gonna play. Family Feud, weekdays. What? Weekdays at 2 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. Northern Illinois trying to uh, play Scrooge in a big way on homecoming Saturday. They've done so this far. They've uh, got a 21 nothing three touchdown lead on uh, Eastern Michigan's Eagles here in uh, the Eastern Michigan playpen. And yeah, Jerry Kill, as we said, and, uh, you know, this is not just all about Southern Illinois. He was at Saginaw Valley State, a, a strong Division II program here in Michigan, Emporia State in his home state of Kansas, and he brought his whole staff from Southern Illinois, Doug, and uh, you got to believe that continuity and consistency means a lot coming into D1A at Northern Illinois. It definitely does. When you got guys around you can trust, you know, yeah. and, 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 and so that definitely, you know, you get, the guy, you get the guys in the field to believe in that, that's when you start winning a lot of football games. All right, this is Corey Welch, the return man from the five-yard line for Eastern Michigan. Corey Welch with a move. And still alive before he's banged out of bounds about the 33-yard line. 28-yard kickoff return for Corey Welch as uh, he has uh, been given an opportunity. Jeff Jennings said, we want the football in his hands on the return of kicks. Playmaker. You know, if you got a guy that can take it the distance, you want the ball kicked to him. 
gets the football, he can score from anywhere. Let's look at this drive chart, Doug, for Eastern Michigan. Uh, that's not the way Jeff Jennick and his offensive uh, coordinator in this one, uh, Scott uh, is boring, wanted to draw this thing up. And the best field position they've had is starting their own 30. You know, and, and you know, they, they can't get, they can't start any drive at the 50 or inside of Northern Illinois territory. It's been tough on them. Well, again, it bears repeating. They are playing with their backup quarterback now, Andy Schmidt, who has been a two-year starter. Schmidt wants to go up top. Are we going to get a flag late as that throw was intended for tight end Josh LaDuke? LaDuke was being covered by Mike Sobel, who seemed to time that up perfectly as a football arrived. That's either perfect timing or got away with a little bit of pass interference. They tried to throw the route up the seam, the skinny post, and he was draped on him like he had his off. The offhand was wrapped around his waist a little bit, I think, but the refs didn't see it. The refs don't see it. They can't call it. Well, safeties and corners are taught, though. I mean, you got to do it subtly, right? But if you can, uh, you know, maybe help guide a receiver a little bit to gain an advantage. Pass assistance. Is that pass assistance. There, so, there you go. I like it. Run that option for the first time today for Andy Schmidt. We've seen a lot of this in the last couple of years. As Schmidt got near the 40-yard uh, the line, he was dragged down by Mike Krause, the nose tackle of Northern yeah. Illinois. And if you're a genic, you got to be holding your breath every time your quarterback pulls that ball down there. Thin at cornerback. Schmidt's already a little nicked up, so you don't want him to take too many shots. I'm sure he won't. They, I'm sure they'd rather have him pitch that football than yep. keep it. Well, it's going to bring up a third down and two now. And again, Eastern Michigan came into today 11th in the MAC in converting third downs at already a 35% clip. And on third and short, though, a little bit better, about 50%. This is a third and let's call it two for Andy Schmidt. They'll run the football. Terrence Blevins, that second effort got him near. That uh, that 42 yard line, which was the line to make Alex Kuba on the stop for Northern Illinois. I'm looking at I'm looking at the back of the line judge right here. Looks like that going to be a bit short. Big fella gets the ball. I mean, he gets he gets more than he should have gotten on this because of his size and his power. But he's going to come up short. You know, right now, hey, Northern Illinois is swarming to the football. You have to gang tackle a guy that size or he will break tackles and pick up a first down from up here. It looks like with our naked eye, it's a little bit short maybe about uh, half a yard if that's the case you're down 21 nothing 620 left in the first half football on your side of the football field meaning Eastern Michigan Jeff Jennick have no choice but to get that punt unit out you know I, the conventional wisdom says punt it but I say quarterback sneak it you know or give line, let the big fella let Blevins take it off tackle but, you know, I would I would go for it. You have to get you've got to get something well, by down. the looks of that encouragement yeah. from Jeff Jennick yeah. with a clap of the hands as we said about maybe you know a, a half yard short as you <laughs> saw the the sticks being stretched out by uh, by the referee Stan Evans what you do is you go in the huddle right now if you're in if you're Schmidt you tell your offensive line everybody has to bow up come off the football fire off just give me a crease you only need half a foot let's just get this first down we have to get it's homecoming we're at home you know we can't lose this game we're down 21 we cannot give them the ball back let's help our defense out let's let's move this football get this first we'll down. our man with the numbers up here in the booth Andrew Streeter that's a familiar name here around Ypsilanti the son of the outstanding uh, associate AD for sports information Jim Streeter says five for nine on fourth downs this year for Eastern Michigan. 0 for 1 today, though, as a part of that uh, that drive chart we just showed. You. They need a half yard. Does Andy Schmidt going to start option right, and he'll dive to the 45 yard line. He's got an Eastern Michigan first down, and what his homecoming crowd are rising on that. They needed the, the chains to be moved with this drive to be kept alive, Doug. It was a short game, but a huge play for Eastern Michigan and a big morale booster. You see him take the snap, looking for a crease. He gets he almost runs a little too wide. You don't want him to stretch it out. He gets north and south at the last minute, jumps out, dives for the first down, keeps the drive alive. That's a big play. It didn't look good on the snap, did it? He came out of there off the exchange, stumbling a little bit, but that veteran, Andy Schmidt, got the first down. The young man from St. John's, Michigan, up in the uh, the mid part of the Wolverine State, go back to the ground game, and that's Dwayne Priest. That's that inside delay. Doug, what, what are you looking to get accomplished in that offset look and that inside delay? And it, part of, are you reading zone blocks there if you're if you're a tailback? What you do is the same as lining your running back up in the eye formation or, or single back and turning around and handing him a zone play. It's just you're giving it to him from the opposite side. 
helping your lineman get on their blocks more. Maybe by the time he gets the football and gets to the right side of that line, or it may cut back. Mm -hmm. You know, you give a running back that has good vision that ball and, and th that play, and, and he can make things happen. All right, Dwayne Priest with a second consecutive carry. Oh, Priest got drilled. Well, Priest never got started there as uh, he took a shot as the hit came from uh, and Adam Coleman. Coleman wears number 93 in that Northern Illinois defense. In Northern Illinois, they're not really big on defense. You know, they're not huge, but they just they, they don't get blocked. They make a lot of plays. They're very active. We are ISOing Larry English there to give you a look at this All-American candidate. I'm sure in the scouting report they ISOed him all week long. Run the ball away from this young man. All right, third down and five now. The line to make it the 45-yard line. Andy Schmidt out of the shotgun with three wide receivers. Schmidt with time throws the out route caught by Jacory Stone. Stone just got tripped up by Melvin Ricer. He was headed to the zone for six. First down, though, Eastern Michigan. You know, they get man coverage right there, and Schmidt puts the ball on his receiver. You know, good catch. He's one missed tackle from breaking this and you keep his balance. But right now, the receivers have to win. If you see, as a receiver, you're getting man coverage and you're not getting any help over the top. There's no safety. You got to beat your man. You got to win. They win on that route, move the chains, pick up a first down. On the right side of that Eastern Michigan offensive line, Dan DeMaster and uh, Bridger Bulky trying to do a job on Larry English. Now Smith will step up, put that football in his pocket before he finally got uh, banged to the ground. Corey Hansen, who wears number 26, that linebacker up with a stop. But Smith, is Smith starting to get into a little bit of a, a rhythm now, getting a lather going? And that's what they call it, getting the lather, you know, getting comfortable back there. You know, you never know. Maybe he was not mentally prepared to start this football game this week. You know, I'm sure he, he's had starts, but he didn't know going to this game he was going to be playing this much. So he gets back there. He has to get a little loosened up. Looks like right now he's very comfortable back there. I would Larry English uh, get in a uh, respite on the sidelines now. I run the football with Terrence Blevins, that big 240-pound back. Seattle the spread again, taking that inside the laid handoff. He got inside the 35 as a Corey Hansen again made the stop as we're approaching the three minute mark left in the opening half. And right now this drive is taking a lot of time off the clock. And they, they were able to pick up third down and short and move the football. But they've got to find a way to get this ball into the end zone. You know, take what no Illinois defense is giving them. They've got to find a way to score right now. Andy Schmidt with three wide receivers now. Ja'Cory Stone is leading receiver here to the near side. Now Smith will play pitch and catch, and he's uh, on time with his tight end, Josh LaDuke. LaDuke has his third reception of the afternoon. There's LaDuke, 230-pound third-year sophomore, who's been getting a, a lot of the repetitions, and a lot of the time the, the football's coming his way, Doug. Oh, yeah, football's coming his way. A simple play, Smith finds him. He sits down the zone. Takes a snap, direct snap to him. Doesn't even take a step, just lets it go. Quick release, tries to pick up that first down, and they do. And the linebackers, Tim McCarthy, Josh Allen, converge to get uh, LaDuc to the ground, but not before Eastern Michigan moves the sticks. Andy Schmidt going to back out of there and look deep. He'll go to the end zone, and that throw was incomplete. He wanted the true freshman, Marvon Sanders, in coverage with Melvin Rice. Really like Sanders, true freshman, and obviously they're trying to get the football in his hands today. Reverses and stretching the field vertically, Doug. Very quick hit, and you see Schmidt right here. He, he takes the hand, he takes the snap, pulls it down like he's going to run the draw. Jumps back, tries to get the linebackers to suck down and then let it go. Well, you saw uh, Larry English, and they flip-flop him right side sometimes. He is on the right side here on this uh, second and ten. Schmidt again, looking middle, came underneath, and Danteo Gage did not get the football put away. Well, Doug, you run that short crossing route, and you're running into potentially a lot of traffic. Uh, those guys with the other jerseys that have mean intentions, huh? You know, when you're a guy that's Danteo Gage's size, 180 pounds, and you're He's running around generously with, very generous a generous 180 with pads maybe and he's running around in that area where those linebackers are you don't want to you, you never fully extend sometimes you get what they call alligator on him don't pull it in and you hear those footsteps come oh, yeah, heard you those. gotta like though what Eastern Michigan's getting done on third downs five and nine but this is a long one third and ten Schmidt with time will rifle his throw and it was partially deflected as that throw was batted down by John Tranchatella. 
Tranchatella wears number 42. There's uh, Big John. He started a lot of football games last year for uh, Joe Novak because of the injury to Tim McCarthy. And you see, they, they've been trying to stretch the field. A couple balls have been overthrown, but for the most part, they haven't been able to find too many holes in that Northern Illinois secondary to put the ball. A lot of stuff has been short, you know, that, and, and, and right there is a, a prime example of it. 48, or may, yeah, make it about a 47-yard field goal attempt from the left hash mark. Coming up for Joe Carithers, the 200-pound sophomore. This will be out of the hold of Ryan Downard. So from the left hash, it'll be 47 yards officially to try to get Eastern Michigan on the board. Carithers, did he have enough leg? Nope, it came up short underneath that crossbar. And so Eastern Michigan's opportunity to get points on the board late in the second quarter goes by the wayside. You know, it, and that's tough right now. You know, they're down 21. They get to the to the up to your opponent's 30, and they can't get anything out of it. You know, you get you get a kick that falls two yards short, and it didn't even you know make it to the uprights. And right now, you, you have to wonder about the morale on Eastern Michigan sideline right now. You have to wonder, you know, can we get anything going? And, you know, when they go into halftime, hopefully they can keep Northern Illinois out of the end zone one more time before halftime. All right, so Dan Nicholson uh, back on the board. We'll take a look at the Audemars board, and we'll talk about this momentarily. Ball State trying to go to 5-0 and with this lead over Kent State. We'll get back to that in a moment. Miko Brown on that first down carry now for Northern Illinois. Miko Brown has been sharing work with tailback Montel Clanton today. Both of them have had strong afternoons. Here's the thing for Brady Hoke's ball club. After, and of course, Dante Love, and we send all of our, our thoughts, our prayers, and our best wishes to Dante Love, his family, and the whole Ball State football family after he came up with that, uh, that spinal cord injury last week. Mentally, more than anything else, how do they respond to uh, one of their tremendous seniors going down like that? And that's something that uh, you know you, you gotta, you certainly have to take into account. As Dan Nicholson kept the football from his quarterback spot, Doug, what about it? I mean, how does a football team deal with that psychologically, mentally, emotionally? That's, that's the tough part about football because you know, as a player, that any play, any given play, it can be you. You know, when you. When you hit people and, and you're tackling, you know, stuff can happen on the football field. You, you just pray before you go out that it doesn't happen to you. But when you see someone go down, it kind of brings it you back to reality. You, you can't think about it while you're playing because you play tentative. Mm -hmm. But when you see it happen on the field, you know, especially when it's one of your guys, one of your teammates, it makes you a bit nervous. Yeah, again, our best wishes to the entire Ball State football family. Now, this is Greg Turner. Turner made that grab from that uh, quick bubble screen from Dan Nicholson, but he got taken down by Jacob Wyatt. And uh, that is going to come up uh, short of that first down. Greg Turner has stepped into the, the breach because Matt Simon again injured. And Simon will come into this, uh, this one today with uh, an average of 19 yards per catch after an uh, average of 18 yards per catch last year. So that's a big, big loss for Northern Illinois. Simon sustained a foot injury in practice and did not make the trip from DeKalb with the, the Huskies. You know, yes, Simon and, and Palmer have been there, two big, big go-to guys. But this afternoon, Turner's been getting the work done. Well, and David he's Palmer's getting, been shut out, huh? He's been shut out. Yeah. Hadn't heard his name. And you know, Turner's been the guy. He's like, hey, you know, if you guys are going to draw coverage, I'm getting man coverage. Throw the football to me. Let me make a few plays. And he's been doing that. So Eastern Michigan using this timeout, want to get their hands on the football one more time, but yeah, again, absolutely. You know, your hearts go out and just uh, such uh, an emotional after the big 42 to 20 win over Indiana last week, and uh, our good buddy Mike Godfrey, an outstanding football analyst with us at ESPN, he will he will be uh, giving you some ideas of his thoughts about this Ball State program coming up at halftime. Now Andy Ditbenner trying to angle that kick away from DeAnthony White and look at the roll on the back end of this from Ditbenner. Outstanding job by Andy Ditbenner as he put that football down at the nine yard line with uh, just about 29 seconds left now in this opening half. It's got Eastern Michigan backed up for Jeff Jennings. Well, Eastern Michigan has to go into halftime and figure out what they can do well on offense and what they can sustain. Are they going to hang their head on the run? Are they going to hang their head on the short pass? Are they going to try to find the way to go downfield? Right now they're starting. They're back at the nine-yard line. You know, poor field position. 
which is you know and, and, which has plagued them the entire afternoon and they're not able they haven't had a big play yet mm -hmm. you know so the thing is they have to find someone on offense that's to step up and make a big play they have to put they say hey you know Get, get, you guys get on my back. You know, we're struggling right now, but get on my back. I'm going to make some plays. They've got to find some offense from, from somebody. Yeah, but you wonder here with the football starting uh, from the nine-yard line, if this is the time, we'll see Andy Schmidt delivering the quick out, and that's caught by Donteo Gage for a gain of about five, but that clock's still moving inside the 22nd mark. Semi-hurry, I guess, huh, for Andy Schmidt in Eastern Michigan? They're just trying to get something positive out of it. Hopefully get it. Well, that's not going to help, but they're trying to get something out of it. Yeah, Schmidt bobbled the football, and guess who? Larry English just tracked him down from the backside, and that will put the finishing touches on the first 30 minutes of football. And a most opportunistic and a just strong defensive effort from the Huskies of Northern Illinois, paced by, you know, the interceptions. That have taken place uh, here in the first half by uh, Bradley Pruitt and Tim McCarthy. And staunch, I guess, huh, is the best way to describe the Northern Illinois effort. And it hasn't helped Eastern Michigan's cause that Kyle McMahon left in the second series as uh, he was hit by Alex Kuba in this uh, first quarter. You know, hopefully it's nothing major. It doesn't look like it's anything too serious. But when you have any type of injury to the shoulder of the throwing arm of a quarterback, it can, you know, and, and you know, that's where he throws the football with that arm. It can definitely be, you know, a, a situation where he can't even play. He can't even suit up. He's not going to do the team any good. So hopefully he bounces back from that. But today he's done. And Northern Illinois uh, losing two football games uh, at Minnesota and at Western Michigan by a total of just seven points. All right, we're now joined by the first-year head coach of the Huskies of Northern Illinois, Jerry Kill. Jerry, defensively, you get the, the picks from Brad Pruitt and Tim McCarthy. You've got to be thrilled with the way your football team has played on that side of the ball. There's, there's no question our defense has played very well and given us opportunities to score points. And, and uh, the only thing that was really a flaw in the first half for us is missing that field goal. But I uh, thought the kids responded well, and we just got to, you know, we got to finish what, uh, what we've done in the first half. And, Coach, um, how, how are you? Congratulations on the first half. Anyway, I just want to tell you that you guys come into the game, you've been able to run the ball effectively. In the second half, you look to continue to try to keep mixing it up with the two running backs or, or try to throw the ball a little more in the second half. We're going to do what Coach Riley did against Oregon State. <laughs> we're we're going we're to we're run it, it, run it, and throw it a little bit and, and see what happens. <laughs> Jerry, like that analogy very much. Enjoy halftime. We'll see you in the second half. Thank you. All right, that's Jerry Kill, the head football. <laughs> he alludes to Mike Riley. And the Oregon State uh, shocking upset over USC. It's all Northern Illinois here in the first 30 minutes. The Huskies with a 21 0 halftime lead. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? Come on, what's your secret? Would you take lessons? You got your own pro? Yep, I got a bunch of them. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Get 12 months of Golf Digest with easy to follow tips and techniques for just $14.97. Order today and receive this DVD absolutely free. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Don't pay another mortgage payment or maintenance fee on your timeshare. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only, for making it so easy. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. No more mortgage payments, no more maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Our thousands of satisfied customers have made us the largest resale marketplace in the world. Call Timeshares Only now. The free information kit with our 10 secrets on selling your timeshares waiting. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now could be the best time to sell. 
Call Timeshares Only today. Thank us tomorrow. Call Timeshares Only now and get your free information kit. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 800-314-0762. That's 800-314-0762. Call 800-314-0762 now. Update your home with kitchen and bath faucets on sale now at Menards. Give your bathroom a new look with this single-handle classic faucet from Delta, only $69. This high-arc two-handle kitchen model with matching sprayer is just $84. Take the chill out of ceramic, natural stone, and tile floors with the warm tile system from Easy Heat. It's simple to install and operates for just pennies a day. Cover 19 to 26 square feet for just $89. Larger kits are also on sale. Save big money at Menards. Unconventional. If you're wrong, he'll end up with no hands and no feet. Uncaring. Technically, if I'm wrong, you'll end up dead, but I take your point. Unbelievably brilliant. You, you, you. When your life is at stake. And nobody knows anything, huh? Then how is it you always think you're right? I don't. I just find it hard to operate on the opposite assumption. He's your best bet. See, it is shocking. House, the cure for the common weekend. Sundays at 5 on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. Which 70s sitcom star is the host of the new TV game show? I think I know this one. He's on the new show based on the wildly popular trivia board game where viewers at home can play against the studio contestants and win big money just by videotaping their questions and sending them in. I got it! The answer is me! Christopher Knight and the show is Trivial Pursuit America Plays where you can play, star, and win. Yes! Woo! Weekdays at 3 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. This past week of football, a very exciting one for the Mid-American Conference. And to bring us up to date on uh, some of those hot gridiron stories, what do you say we head to the ESPNU studio crew? Lowell Galindo, Mike Gottfried, and Tom Luganville. Guys, take it away. Welcome into the Halftime Report. I'm Lowell Galindo here with Coach Mike Gottfried and Tom Luganbill. Last week, we saw a couple of MAC programs get a little gutsy with some of their play calls. Ended up coming up short in those games. First off, it was Central Michigan going for two. It gave them the lead against Purdue. Ended up losing that game. But what did it say about the Chippewas and their attitude? Butch Jones rolled the dice. He felt like on the road, take an opportunity right now, get to two points and win the game. For Toledo, though, what do you think about going for two in double overtime? Well, I was very surprised that they did it at home. But one of the things you could say about both Toledo and Central Michigan, when you've got stellar quarterbacks like you've got with Opelt and Dan LaFever, gives you an opportunity right off the bat. Coach is showing the confidence in the signal caller. When do you decide to go for a play like that? How many times can it just be a gut instinct? I mean, it's a call that some people are going to question if it doesn't go your way. I think in overtime, it has to be a gut. And I saw uh, Tom Amstutz's quote. He said, my team was tired. So I figured it's now or never. As for Ball State, they are coming off their first ever win against the BCS program, taking down Indiana. What do you like about Ball State right now, the way they've been playing, Coach? They're the best team in the state of Indiana. That includes Notre Dame, Purdue, Indiana, uh, Earlham, Anderson, uh, Indiana Central, whatever. He going. He Maybe going. the Indianapolis Colts. They're the best team in the state of Indiana. Wow. How about their chances for a BCS pick? Well, I like their chances because their schedule favors them. The problem is they got to gain way too much ground to be able to get up into the top 12. I just don't think it's possible. No, they'll make it. And another huge problem, huge concern as you look at these numbers is the status of Dante Love came into last week as the nation's leader in receiving yards. His career is probably over after suffering a spinal cord injury. So a huge hit for the team, both and most importantly emotionally, but on the field. When you consider both of those factors, how do you get beyond something like a loss of a big senior? That's going to be tough. It's a big loss. When you lose a kind of player, Dante Love, lose any player, and he has that injury and he's operated on after the game, it's going to be a real tough job for Brady Hoke to get this ball club back up. Well, it's unfortunate because it's a high-risk, high-reward sport. And any time you play the game of football, you're, there are going to be negatives, there are going to be positives, and you do run the risk of being injured. It's just unfortunate to see a player of this guy's caliber not have an opportunity in the future to continue his career. That's a sad thing. You almost have to dedicate this season to him. And you've got to say, we're going to win this championship for you. 
positive with the situation, even though he is not going to be able to play football most likely. His head coach Brady Hoke says he should be able to live a full, complete, and healthy life. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, to appreciate that. Don't go away now. Coming up from Ypsilanti, Michigan, Doug Chapman and I will recap what went right and what maybe not so much for the Eagles of Eastern Michigan and the Huskies of Northern Illinois in the first half. And we'll take a look at some of the highlights, too. Don't you miss out on that. Don't go away. We're coming right back to Ypsilanti on ESPN+. Plus. Get your career cooking. Literally. Call an affiliate of the Cordon Blue Schools, North America. You can train as a culinary professional and work as a chef, pastry chef, restaurant manager, and more. Call now, and we'll send you this complimentary career guide. Operators are standing by. Call 800-719-0743. That's 800-719-0743. I know this drill. I rack up a big charge on my credit card. I get a tote bag. <laughs> Well, actually, with our points program, you can get gift cards, flat screen TVs, even plane tickets. How do you get enough points for that? Oh, all kinds of ways. By using your debit card, your credit cards, checking account. Online. I don't believe you. What? You're messing with me, right? No, I'm not messing with you. Can I still get the tote bag? Absolutely. It's not just banking. It's National City. What's my car X factor? Brakes, tires, oil, engine repair. I need someone who does it all and does it right. Get Car X brakes from just $89. That's $89 installed. Only at Car X. Hey, Brian. Hey, what's up with the beard? Oh, I'm not shaving till I have to put gas in my new Civic Hybrid. Okay. With up to an EPA estimated 45 miles per gallon highway, it gives you more time between fill-ups. A lot more time. The Civic Hybrid from Honda, the most fuel-efficient car in its class. Go to shophonda.com to build and price your own Civic. I am 11, but to you I am numero uno. Because when you see me, you are just moments away from hot, juicy, delicious this. Prepare to be Culver. Enjoy your butter burger, sir. Thank you. Who are you talking to? I wasn't talking to myself. Culver's. Get culverized. Hungry for a value? Grab a snack pack and get a butter burger, small fries, and drink for just $2.99. What's my car X factor? For my car repairs. I go to some place I can trust, where they know my car and my name. Now get a 1999 oil change with a free tire rotation. Don't worry, call the car X man. Bond. James Bond. My 50 Chicago Cable 8 is celebrating 00 September with three James Bond classics. You destroy every vehicle you get into. Standard operating procedure. Tonight at 11, it's The World Is Not Enough on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. Oh, I love to see you boys like this. Loaded. <laughs> Everybody loves Raymond. Monday at 6 on My 50 Chicago. 30 minutes of football in the books. 21-0 Northern Illinois on top of Eastern Michigan. Try to spoil a homecoming Saturday here in uh, Ypsilanti. Hope you enjoyed the first uh, 30 minutes of football here after, you know, Eastern Michigan's won three consecutive homecoming games over Western Michigan, Toledo, and Kent State. Michael Regga alongside Doug Chapman. But, again, a loser quarterback, Kyle McMahon, here during the first quarter of play. And a couple of interceptions. And very opportunistic, Doug, has been uh, Jerry Kill and his Northern Illinois football team. They've had some luck on their side today. McMahon goes down with a shoulder. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. It's like maybe a mild sprain. But offensively, they've run the ball very, very well. Northern Illinois has. And they play tough defense. Tough defense indeed. And, of course, uh, that's been spearheaded by the two interceptions from cornerback Bradley Pruitt and middle linebacker Tim McCarthy. And, of course, Larry English, that All-American defensive end, always commands a double or triple team to be sure. But... Jerry Kill's defense has been flying around today, make no mistake. They're getting off of blocks, not staying blocked. They're accounting for Larry English, but the other 10 guys are playing very, very well. Yeah, that they are, and we'll see it's coming upon Jeff Jennick and that Eastern Michigan offense to find a way here in the second half. Don't go away. When we get back, we'll uh, take a look at what transpired in the first 30 minutes of football. It's all Northern Illinois right now. They've got a three-touchdown lead at halftime 
on Eastern Michigan. One of every four teachers in Michigan earned a degree here. One of only two schools in the country to offer a master's degree in orthotics and prosthetics. One of only four universities in the country offering a polymers and coatings program. One of just two online integrated marketing communications programs in the country. One purpose. Eastern Michigan University, education first. Fundamentals. Technique. Fun. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Character. Excitement. Strengthening the foundation of college football. One kid, one kid, one kid, one kid at a time. We have the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of the world's most important manufacturing industry. We have a national television audience on the premier sports network. We have the newest, best football stadium in America. Motor City Bowl 12. Football in Detroit during the holidays. You want to be there. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-Sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-Sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-Sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-Sports.com. Bond. James Bond. My 50 Chicago Cable 8 is celebrating 00 September with three James Bond classics. You destroy every vehicle you get into. Standard operating procedure. Tonight at 11, it's The World Is Not Enough on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. People move on. You've grown. It's time for you to move on. One man dared Antoine Fisher to face his past. You couldn't destroy me. I'm still standing. And I always will be. Academy Award winner Denzel Washington, Antoine Fisher. Sunday at 7 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. Good day, Chicago. As the financial crisis continues, Good Day Chicago brings you all the latest developments. That's the largest banking failure in the history of this country. Our experts know their stuff and how it affects you. It's your mortgage, it's my mortgage, it's everybody's mortgage. Monday on Good Day Chicago, we're going to show you how to keep your credit card bills from piling up by picking the right card for you. It's part of our Money Saver Week. Monday morning on Good Day Chicago. WWE and My Network TV introduce the most desirable women on television. Alluring. It's my passion. Confident. It's my desire. Determined. My world. These are WWE divas. I'm ready. I'm ready. And they're coming. We're ready. Are you? To My Network TV. Hey, Chicago. Are you ready for WWE SmackDown? Fridays at 7, starting October 3rd on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. 21 up in Northern Illinois on top of Eastern Michigan with still a half of football to go. Hope you're enjoying it on this beautiful Saturday. Michael Regai alongside my partner, Doug Chapman. Hey, easy way to break this first half down in uh, analyze form. Kyle McMahon goes down, and that changed everything in Eastern Michigan offensively when the starting quarterback got hurt. And, Doug, it, uh, it happened in that first quarter on the hit from Alex Kuba. That changed the complexion of the whole first half of the game. He goes down with an injury, nothing major, but it takes him out of the game. Offense completely goes kaputs after that. Let's take a look at uh, this first play, and here again is uh, that throw that was picked off by Bradley Pruitt. This was on the first possession, and now here's the run from Kyle McMahon and Kuba with that shot that drove him into the ground and that maybe separated the right shoulder. Yeah, maybe a little AC joint sprain, but it's on his throwing arm. A little tough for that for him right there. Led to the Miko Brown touchdown run, and then Andy Schmidt comes in, and Tim McCarthy said, "I'll take that pick." Yo, know, Miko Brown scores a big one. McCarthy wants to score a touchdown too. Takes the pick. Schmidt throws it right to him. Tries to score. Offense follows up behind him. Demarcus Grady, who's the, the backup quarterback behind Dan Nichols, and then the reverse inside the red zone. Marcus Perez stretching it to the corner. Risky play at the one, but it works. 
hey, if you're feeling it on offense, you can run reverse at the one yard line. Perez gets into the end zone. Andy Schmidt uh, with some work to do with his Eastern Michigan offense. They are down by three touchdowns while Dan Nicholson liking the way that his offense has put the three TDs on the board for Northern Illinois. 6,800 student athletes. 7 million fans. 34 more champions. College ball games. Where everybody wins. Brought to you by the Football Bowl Association. Looking for a high interest CD? It's easy to find when you go to the right place. GMACBank.com Where right now, our 12-month CD gives you one of the best rates available. So don't wait. Lock it in now at GMACBank.com And earn more while keeping your money safe and secure. Go to GMACBank.com today. GMAC Bank. Smart. Simple. Safe. I don't know, maybe you should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. Huh? I, I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free Good Hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? NCAA football crosses the border for the third year in a row with the International Bowl, bringing the U.S. college football experience to Canada in a big way. Postseason bowl game action with great marching bands, cheerleaders, and dance teams. It's a team from the Big East versus a team from the MAC. The International Bowl crosses the border January 3rd, Rogers Center, Toronto. For tickets, go to internationalbowl.org or ticketmaster.ca. You don't want to miss it. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Well, Jerry Kill uh, looking for his uh, first uh, MAC win as head football coach at Northern Illinois. You know, that victory last week over Indiana State after the two losses to at Minnesota and at Western Michigan by a total of seven points. You've got a football team with a three touchdown lead at 21 nothing and they're going to get their hands on the football here to start half number two. Let's see how uh, Northern Illinois handles this first possession. 30 minutes of football left. I don't know. Well, you know, and then maybe some overtime to follow. We'll see. We saw a game turn around like this uh, last year in DeKalb. Miko Brown on this kickoff return. Well, look at the shake from Miko Brown with a couple of flags that are going to bring that back for the block in the bat. But Miko Brown uh, had that uh, return. Now the 30 yard line is going to be negated by what uh, is going to be a uh, hold block in the back. Actually, three flags flew on that Brown return. And Nico Brown is a very, very quick, <laughs> very lightning quick young man. You saw him catch that ball in the end zone on the sideline and brings it back, almost breaks it. Holding during the return on the return team, number 17. The foul is penalized 10 yards from the spot of the hole. First down. 
Well, Greg Turner, who has a career-high five receptions in the first half, the guilty party. You take a look at uh, the numbers, and of course, Northern Illinois averaged better than six yards for offensive play, even though Eastern Michigan had the football almost four minutes longer than the Huskies did, Doug. The Huskies are running the ball very, very efficiently. They have been in the first half, and, and, and that's where most of their production has come from. It hasn't been through the pass. It's been through the ground game. Uh, Dan Nicholson with the I formation. Uh, this first carry of the second half is Miko Brown, and he's got that corner turn with a burst. Well, Miko Brown got to the corners. He got by outside linebacker Andre Hatchett. So Miko Brown adding to his career high, had 62 uh, yards of rushing in the first half. As we go back and look at our National City Bank game plan, what did Jerry Kill want to get accomplished in the first half, Doug? Run, run, run. He wants to establish the run early. They've always been a good running team here at Northern, and he wanted to establish it early, set the tone. Now they're averaging 6.1 yards per, per carry. I mean, you, you can't ask for anything better than that. Now Miko Brown now with a career best, 73 yards rushing. And this is Miko Brown, who got dragged down uh, from behind. It's Jermaine Jenkins, the 207-pound senior linebacker for Eastern Michigan, who hauled down uh, Miko Brown. We have yet to see Justin Anderson, who is a second-team All-Mac performer a year ago, the tailback, who had 168 yards against Eastern Michigan. Is there's your National City game plan for the Eagles? You know, and they and, and they and, and Host Law really hasn't been a factor. You know, he's got a lot of assists. Not a lot of solo, uh, solo tackles, but McMahon was a big part of their offense. He goes out early in the game, and their offense has sputtered ever since. Uh, that two-yard gain for Miko Brown. Nicholson with that quick shot, and that is uh, caught by Marcus Perez, who's had the two-yard touchdown run. So Nicholson, uh, out of that gun, throwing a lot of uh, a lot of quick throws, quick outs, quick ins to uh, his wide receivers. A lot of it out of that 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 bubble look. You know, neither quarterback has been able to go downfield. It's worked better for Northern because they are running the ball better, but they've been using a lot of quick strike to short passing game. You know, but I'm waiting to see one of these offensive coordinators find some plays to get their receivers vertical, get that ball downfield, and, and open the offense up a little bit. Now that man, Daniel Holtzclaw, the outstanding all-Mac first-team linebacker from Eden, Oklahoma. He's looking to be a playmaker for his defense. There's off that waggle again, that throw back to the tight end, Reed Cunningham. Nicholson is right on time with Cunningham. That's, uh, they used that three times today, Doug, that waggle off play action with Cunningham running free. You know, waggles and bootlegs, and, and the, you know, when, when, when they're showing run action, with the way they've run the ball, as you see these linebackers, they have to drift, they have to come down, they have to play the run first, because if they don't, it's going to be a run, and they run it right at them. And what it does is it frees these tight ends up to run into the void where the linebackers were and catch balls and make these big gains and pick up big chunks of yardage. When you can run the football, it opens up everything else for your offense. A couple of grabs, 46 yards for tight end Reed Cunningham. And uh, on that snap, we've got movement. This will be a false start on Northern Illinois. Number 65 on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. Jason Anye Buaga. Got hit. Uh, Buaga has done a terrific job, though, today. The whole offensive line Trevor Olson, the left tackle, Jason Anye, Buaga, the left guard, Eddie Adamski, that veteran center, making his 28th career start, and then Dan Keller at right guard, and John Brose, the 300 pound right tackle. These guys have uh, done a job today up front. For that Northern Illinois run game, and out of that spread formation, go back to the ground with Miko Brown in Eastern Michigan territory down to the 44 yard line. Miko Brown with a quick gain of 13 for the first down for Northern Illinois as he continues to churn his way toward his first 100 yard day. As Brown, though, looks a little bit ouchy. You know, hopefully he's okay, but like you said earlier, that offensive line has just come out and set the tone all afternoon. They're blowing Eastern Michigan off the football. And, you know, Northern Illinois, that's what they do. They run the ball. They've done it forever. Most recently, you know, guys like Garrett Wolf and yeah. Michael Turner, who are in the NFL now. Thomas Hammock. They've always done it. Yep. And this is what they're doing right now. It's their bread and butter. Nine consecutive seasons of a 1,000-yard ground gainer or more. Now go back to the, uh, the right side and... With run into football as uh, Northern Illinois at that tailback spot gets Chad Spann in for his first carry of the day. That's your number four tailback right now. Actually, I guess number three. And again, Justin Anderson se seemingly is just, uh, you know, again, uh, one of the top ball carriers in the MAC last year, uh, over a thousand yards on the ground. And 
Not much playing time this year, none today. You, know, you got a guy that rushed for over 1,200 yards, hasn't touched the football. Everyone else is having success. Imagine if he was in there. Play action now for Nicholson. Well, being chased from the backside by Jermaine Jenkins, and Nicholson will get ushered out of bounds with a late flag in the direction of Northern Illinois tight end Reed Cunningham. He seemed to be engaged with Andre Hatchett, the, uh, the outside linebacker of uh, Eastern Michigan. Defensive holding. And I, and I guess Eastern, you know, those tight ends are running free, and so they're trying to they're trying to stop these big guys any way they can. During the run, holding number 20 on the defense. That's a 10-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Results in a first down. Well, Doug, I just called his name, Andre Hatchett. Uh, he, Daniel Holtz, Claw, Jermaine Jenkins, really the linebacking core, the strength of this defense, but they can ill afford to lose discipline right now, already down 21 0. Turnover, turnovers and penalties will kill you when, 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 you're, when you're trying to win a game. When you're down 21 0, they can be demoralizing. I'll go right back to tailback Chad Spann, and he's come free inside the 15 yard line. Ryan Downer to where's number 10. Finally got him on the ground, but that is a, a, a big burst of uh, almost 20 yards. Let's call it about 18 yards as he'll put it at the 12 yard line for Chad Spann. You know, we talked to Coach Kill going into halftime, and we asked him what his plan was for the second half. He said, We're going to run it, run it, and, and then run it a little bit more. And that's what they're doing right now. They've hung their hat on the run. They're, they're having great success with it, so why go away with it? And Span looks just like everyone else carrying that football out there. Go right back to Chad Span. Tough running off that right side. Again, following the blocks of John Brost, the 300-pound right tackle, and Dan Keller, the 295-pound right guard. And was Span coming in and delivering for head coach Jerry Kill? Well, you know, coming into this game, Span only had three attempts, and he was averaging 24 yards a carry. So I mean, he's. These guys, they've got a stable of running backs, and Span is just the, the next guy on the rotation to get the job done. We're five minutes deep here into quarter number three. Northern Illinois got Miko Brown back. Uh, Brown off the right side for it all caved in. Daniel Holtzclaw, the uh, All-American candidate from Eastern Michigan on the stop. We're number 44 there, and young man from Enid, Oklahoma. And, and right now they're doing whatever Northern is doing whatever they want to do right now offensively. They, they switch quarterbacks right now. They bring in Grady. You know, and he's probably going to do a little bit with the keep it, maybe throw it, but he brings another element. So now Eastern has to be on their heels even more with him right now at the helm. He's a redshirt freshman who wears number three, and he's looking to take that direct snap. But uh, Jerry Kill in Northern Illinois going to take a timeout here as that 40 second play clock was starting to wind down. All right, give us a timeout. We'll come back as Northern Illinois knocking on the door to try to potentially put this one away. I don't understand. Okay. With your new elite checking account, right. we pay the ATM fees that you get charged by other banks. Make sense? No. Well, you know how other banks charge you ATM fees, right? Yes. Well, we take care of those. You take care we of We pay them. You pay them? People seem to like it. It's not just banking. It's National City. Fundamentals. Technique. Fun. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Character. Excitement. Strengthening the foundation of college football. One kid, one kid, one kid, one kid at a time. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-sports.com. Get your career cooking. Literally. Call an affiliate of the Cordon Blue Schools, North America. 
could train as a culinary professional and work as a chef, pastry chef, restaurant manager, and more. Call now, and we'll send you this complimentary career guide. Operators are standing by. Call 800-719-0743. That's 800-719-0743. Twenty-one nothing, Northern Illinois, and the Huskies inside Eastern Michigan's five-yard line, looking to add to that lead. As we hope you're enjoying Mac football on uh, this homecoming Saturday here out of Brian Earson Stadium, uh, presented by the good folks at Marathon. For all of you Mac football fans, updated uh, news from the gridiron, scores and stats, visit Mac Game Day Central. It can be found on mac-sports.com. Mac Game Day Central, your source for Mac sports. Doug Chapman's here. I'm Michael Regai, and uh, hope you are enjoying a, a Saturday around the Mid-American Conferences. Northern Illinois with uh, third down and two from inside the five. The throw to the end zone, and that is caught. Touchdown, uh, Northern Illinois, as uh, once again, Dan Nicholson getting anything he wants. He hit Kyle Scarb, his uh, fullback. So Scarb with a TD catch all by himself in the end zone. You know, we've talked about it all afternoon. When you can run the football and you show play action, the defense has to respect it. Whether they want to or not, they have to come up. They come up, suck them up, throw the ball right over their head. Tight ends standing with no one around him in the end zone. Touchdown. A very efficient 11-play, 85-yard drive that took five minutes and 30 seconds into this uh, third quarter as Mike Salerno will add the PAT, and it is the Husky dog is barking loud and long here on uh, this Saturday in September as Dan Nicholson and Jerry Kill's offense are up 28-zip. What can I say? It's in my blood. Racing, the STP, it really gets me going. Because Marathon Gasoline with STP provides extra cleaning power and helps maintain fuel economy? That's right. I see all Marathon gas now contains STP additives. See y'all. Remember, pit road speed. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Marathon is proud to sponsor the 2008 MAC Championship on December 5th at Ford Field in Detroit. All right. We eat my volcano taco. <laughs> Don't look at me. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Oh. Was me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? Don't be afraid of the pump. The new Accord from Honda. Go to shophonda.com to build and price your own fuel efficient Accord. Champion, it's how you play. All during the 2008 season, Champion Apparel is showcasing the tradition and history of the Mid-American Conference. Today, let's go back to 1987. That's Jim Harkema. He coached Eastern Michigan to a 7-1 MAC championship record, thus earning a trip to the California Bowl. Now, San Jose State was favored by 17 on the Eastern Michigan offense. Put together a 212-yard rushing day. The defense held their opponents to only 81 yards on the ground. Quarterback Ronnie Adams, MVP Gary Patton, and the men of Eastern Michigan brought home the win, 30-27. Champion, it's how you play. Yeah, some 21 football seasons ago, Jim Harkema had an offensive machine. I mentioned Ron Adams, a quarterback who is a uh, Hall of Famer here. So is Gary Patton, his tailback, who is the MVP of the uh, the California Bowl. A uh, glorious year and uh, with a lot to build on from that point on for Eastern Michigan. And Jeff Jenick is trying to uh, get back on the right side of things here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. You know, winning sometimes can be contagious and you know, they, they haven't won a lot recently, but once you start doing it, you know, it, it gets contagious and Jenick's trying to get that atmosphere back where these guys expect to win in every football game they play. 
They need a touchdown drive right here, don't they? No question about that as uh, Mike Salerno will uh, bang it away with the right foot. And this is Corey Welch from the one yard line on the return. And Welch uh, got uh, upended as he hit the 20. As uh, that hit uh, came from a special teamer, Pat Schiller, a redshirt freshman linebacker. So that's where Eastern Michigan is going to start this drive. Coach Jennick likes likes Welch a lot with the football in his hand. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had they, they haven't found a way really to get him in space. He hasn't had many creases on kickoff returns. So, you know, hopefully they can find a way to get some playmaker of the football in space to get. They need big plays right now. What they really do, and uh, you know, Andy Schmidt. It's not like uh, Schmidt has not been. He's had uh, 20 starts in the last couple of football seasons, 06 and 07, here for Coach Jeff Jennick. And after Kyle McMahon went down, it's a 240 pounders job now. Now this first carry of uh, this possession belongs to Dwayne Priest and Priest uh, got run down. Well you see that gang uh, tackling mentality now by this Northern Illinois front wall as uh, P.J. Perkle uh, made the stop there. Northern Illinois just has more speed on defense than, than Eastern has speed on offense right now. They're trying to hurry up this offense a little bit but stay on the ground. Terrence Blevins. Operating off that left side, Blevins uh, got a couple out to the 25-yard line, and uh, with no huddle now, as Andy Schmidt's getting to the line of scrimmage and uh, trying to speed up the tempo a little bit. They have to, but they also have to find a way to go downfield. Blevins is a good back, but you can't nickel and dime your way from four touchdowns down to get back into a football game. On third and six, Tim McCarthy just popped quarterback. Andy Schmidt before he reached the 30 yard line. Well, McCarthy has already got an interception today. 230 pounds, fifth year senior, state of Wisconsin. Listen to the wallop he laid on Andy Schmidt on this carry. You know, now that is a form tackle. Isn't Nor it? Northern is there. It's called pads popping. Coaches love to hear that noise and. And right now, Northern is flying around. They're just more aggressive right now. Now Kyle Johnson to kick it away, and that fair catch is going to come from Nico Brown at about the 35-yard line. So, uh, yeah, you mentioned being physical. This is all about they've taken control of the line of scrimmage on, on both sides of the football, Doug. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. You you can feel that, and you, you could feel that. The, the, the tremendous physical presence by which Northern Illinois is playing this football game. When a team can can, can physically control you in the trenches, that's it, it's demoralizing to your entire team. Those are your big guys. They set the tone. And when a team comes off the ball offensively and just lines up and runs the ball down your throat, it's demoralizing for a defense. And then when the offense goes out, they can't get anything established, and defense is in their backfield. You know, it's, Northern Illinois just come out, set the tone, and just out tempo with Eastern Michigan all afternoon. Dan Nicholson out of the shotgun will give the football to Miko Brown. He's trying to get to the corner. Kevin Long uh, will push him out of bounds at about the 39 yard line. Uh, we're starting to get into uh, conference play now uh, here at Mid American Conference Football. Let's take a look at uh, how things go. And I mean, you take a look at the east side of things. Uh, Buffalo with that <laughs> tremendous win, courtesy of the Big Ben play that Naaman Roosevelt pulled down in the east. Uh, the only team with a win in conference play but on the west side of things this going to be very interesting ball state western michigan central michigan toledo already with a uh, mac win in their pockets ball state of course at 4-0 having a wonderful year for brady hope nicholson off play action and that pass was knocked down as they're getting a hand on that throw was spencer smith smith the 240 pound senior to bat down that throw from nicholson Good job by him, but the best medicine right now for Eastern Michigan is, is creating some type of turnover. Stripping somebody with the ball, coming up with an interception. They need to get the ball back and either take it to the house off of the off the interception or the fumble recovery, or they got to get the ball back and give their offense great field position because they're not doing much on offense, so they have to help their offense out right now. They, they might have to score points for Momentum it. Momentum play. Have to. Yeah, game changer. Something to get you, something to get you some life in your football team. A big homecoming crowd here on this Saturday at the Rainierson Stadium, and they've been sitting on their hands. Nicholson's going to take a shot deep. He wanted Marcus Perez overthrew him. Kevin Long on the coverage for Eastern Michigan. That's good coverage by Long. You know, you, you see right here, 
Northern's been able to do whatever they wanted all afternoon. They can run the ball. That They've worked the tight end. The play action's been working. They try to go deep. Just great coverage right here on the outside receiver. You know, stay in his pocket. Good jam off the line of scrimmage. Don't let him get a free, easy release. Comes up incomplete. Well, Andy Ditbenner is uh, going to uh, boot this football away. He'll uh, hit it from uh, in the neighborhood of the 27-28 uh, yard line. DeAnthony White standing back at his own 26 for Eastern Michigan. Here's a guy that could provide you some spark on a kickoff return. DeAnthony White's going to let that football hit at the 30 and take that right turn for Northern Illinois and uh, coming to a stop at about the 17-yard line. That's a 44-yard kick for Andy Ditbenner with the roll on the back end of it. Andy Schmidt with another opportunity as we approach the six-minute mark in the third quarter. Eastern Michigan trying to get something generated down by 28. 6,800 student athletes. 1.7 million fans. to you by the Football Bowl Association. 13 progressive universities. Six diverse states. 23 sponsored championships. More than 100 academic All-American athletes. 11 college Hall of Fame coaches. Millions of dedicated fans. One great conference. The Mid-American Conference. The new mark of excellence. Create the bathroom of your dreams at Menards. Brown Medicine Cabinets are a beautiful reflection of you in your bath. These oak or beveled oval styles are just $69. This extra large cabinet with glass shelves is $99. Tub surrounds from American Shower and Bath are long lasting and easy to install. This vantage model has a high gloss finish and six shelves, just $69. The sturdy fit has plenty of storage and is extra thick, $139. Save big money at Menards. The back game of the week from ESPN Plus kicks off Saturday, October 4th at noon Eastern with a battle within the Ohio borders. Chris Jackalmane and the Akron Zips reveal their game plan to slow down the electrifying Eugene Jarvis and the golden flashes of Kent State. Check your local listings to catch the MAC game of the week. It's the Akron Zips against the golden flashes of Kent State, Saturday, October 4th at noon Eastern, only from ESPN Plus. 28-0 Northern Illinois uh, has had all the better of it on this homecoming Saturday. Michael Ray got Doug Chapman back inside our Nearson Stadium on ESPN Plus. Is Andy Schmidt coming back to work here and looking to go up top. Throw is caught by Ja'Cory Stone who reached down off the shoe tops to make the grab. Stone for 15 yards and a first down. One of the biggest plays of the day for Andy Schmidt and the offense. You know, I, I believe that Schmidt and company had 59 yards passing in the first half. They have to find a way to stretch the field. You're not gonna, you're not gonna dink and dunk your way back into a game when you're down four touchdowns. Somebody right now in the receiving core has to step up and get open. Help your quarterback out. Now that quick in route to Jacory Stone who made the grab in traffic out over the 45 to the 46. That's uh, two quick throws to Stone that's uh, taken 29 yards of real estate up. As they got 14 on that one. So Jacory Stone, Glenville High School in Cleveland, Ted Ginn Seniors program that has produced so many terrific Division I-A talents. He's got a wealth of talent there. Stone is just an example of it. He's been a big time player here. And right now, he's got to make some big time plays to help his team out. Play action now for Smith. Or trying to find some room. Still alive, but got dragged down from the backside as uh, Andy Schmidt uh, was uh, taken down 
as that Northern Illinois uh, pressure came on Schmidt earlier today. Kyle McMahon was had this football team moving the starting quarterback for Eastern Michigan, but this is how a McMahon's day came to an end, Doug. The second of back-to-back -back carries, that's a design call. Alex Kuba drove him into the ground, ended his day with that right shoulder problem. You know, not a big hit. He wasn't really blindsided. He just drove his shoulder to the ground, maybe a separation. But as long as you're throwing on, that'll shut you down for the day as a quarterback. Andy Schmidt on the move. He'll dump it off, intended for a Danteo Gage, who wasn't able to secure the football. So now that's going to bring up a third and ten. And so there's uh, Kyle McMahon, as you see, hidden by uh, some of his teammates. And the uh, the sophomore out of Notre Dame Prep, outstanding football program here in the Detroit area, Rochester Hills, Michigan. But uh, his day was all too short for the liking of the Eagles of Eastern Michigan, head coach Jeff Jennick, and uh, all these fans that uh, were hoping he would back up that strong performance he had last week against Maryland. And Jennick speaks highly of him and of, of his ability to run and pass. It's unfortunate that he didn't get a chance to show it today. On third and ten, this is Terrence Blevins who hauled in that screen and got to the midfield stripe before uh, he was uh, pushed out of bounds. So Blevins was uh, pushed out of bounds by David Bryant as they set up screen right. And I'm not sure how, how much of the offense you know, Schmidt was comfortable with coming into this game, but they have not gone downfield. At the, when you're down this much, you have to have something in your package where you can you can try to throw vertical passing routes. They haven't been able to try this. They haven't attempted to really establish that down by four touchdowns. All right, four wide receivers. This is a fourth down now. The line to make is a 44-yard line. Blitz coming. English with pressure. Schmidt got to deliver, and his throw is caught by Ja'Cory Stone. First down, Eastern Michigan. Poise under. If you got Larry English playing Barrett down and you like that, Schmidt stood tall and made a play. A couple plays ago, Schmidt pulled the ball down, and he kind of scrambled around, get sacked. His eyes were down the entire time. Right here, he pulls the ball down. The difference is he's looking downfield the entire time where he's able to see an open receiver, deliver the football, and move the chains for a first down. Now Andy Schmidt now converting that fourth down has Eastern on the move with time here. That throw is uh, not caught by Ja'Cory Stone as he wasn't able to get a foot down as he was trying to lay out here uh, on this near sideline. But Stone has had three big catches on this drive for the Eagles of Eastern Michigan and is uh, going to come off the field right now. Seven catches for 71 yards for Ja'Cory Stone, who came in with 22 receptions coming into this one to lead Eastern Michigan. You know, they've got to find a way to get him open, find a way to get the football in his hand. He's their playmaker in the passing game. All right, Andy Schmidt looking at second and ten now. Again with a three wide receiver look. Blitz coming. They got screen set up, but look out. Justin Blevins just got greeted and greeted rather rudely as that Northern Illinois stick came from Mike Criticos, a backup defensive end who put the pop on Blevins. And, and Eastern Michigan, they've tried to throw a lot of screens this afternoon, trying to play into Northern Illinois, how, how aggressive they are on defense. But besides being aggressive, they're very disciplined. So when they get that upfield rush, you know, a smart defensive end, a smart linebacker can feel a screen coming. They slow down, play the, play in their lane, make a huge play. And right now, Eastern Michigan is having a tough time finding something that works. A big hit by Mike Criticos. Third down, let's call it four. And Andy Schmidt had that pass knocked down. He was trying to go to Dwayne Priest, who had circled out of the backfield on that middle route. And but Northern, I, haven't you been impressed with Northern Illinois' defensive effort today? Oh, their front seven has, has played excellent. I mean, the quarterback has had happy feet. He's never set his feet. He's had someone hanging off of him from behind, someone in his face. Schmidt has not felt comfortable in the pocket the entire afternoon. And even when he does have time, he rushes balls floats balls because he's not comfortable. He thinks that pressure's coming. That's what pressure will do to a quarterback. Another fourth down opportunity for Eastern Michigan. They're two or three today. That throw is knocked down and almost picked off as Schmidt was uh, looking to find that DeAnthony White. White was running that uh, skinny post in the seam and whatever, a lot of white shirts in traffic were 
Schmidt was trying to fit that in, Doug. You know, once again, you see Schmidt, he, he floats a little bit and, and almost gets his receiver killed, but he throws it up there. And he's, they're not giving him much on defense. You know, they're not giving him much. He's got a receiver almost triple covered here and, and gets sandwiched. But, you know, they, they've got to find some way to establish anything on offense, anything. Now Eastern Michigan's offense got to come off the football field as they do not to pick up the, that fourth down and turn it over on downs now to Northern Illinois and Dan Nicholson comes out of the football field with his offense and uh, yet uh, not ready to uh, run the play and uh, Nicholson maybe didn't like the package of personnel he had in the football field Doug and got a timeout. You know, right now, they're probably just going to go to a heavy dose of the running game. Short passes, keep the ball inbound, run the clock, you know, uh, milk the clock. Because right now, they can do whatever they want. They've been doing it all afternoon. They just got to keep their offense on the field, maybe get a field goal here or there. Yeah, the run game's been very, very good for uh, Jerry Kill this afternoon. And, uh, Doug, well, we've got a second. I think both of us, I want to say... Uh, a big hello with a lot of love to my wonderful mother, Patricia Regai, who is uh, back at home after a hospital stay. Big Mac football fan. I know she's watching today. Mom, keep battling, and uh, and we love you. And I know your mom and dad are always uh, checking in on uh, their son with Mac action, too. Oh, yeah, my parents are back in Virginia, and my mom right now is watching the game. Love you, Mom. And my dad is actually accepting an award on my behalf at my high school and being inducted into the Hall of Fame. So Doug Chapman Sr. is representing Doug Chapman Junior. That's terrific. Right now. Great so, stuff. Thank now, you. Now, whose golf game is better, Chapman Senior or Junior? Uh, mine. <laughs> All right. Well, I might have to make a trip to Virginia and ask Pop about that because he may think something else about it after Miko Brown had that carry 162 yards on the ground as Northern Illinois has been dominant up front. Stay with the run game and go right back to tailback Chad Spann. So it's been Miko Brown and Chad Spann. Montel Clanton has had opportunities. Kyle Scarb, their fullbacks, caught a touchdown pass. And, well, Miko Brown setting a, uh, you say, career high. Duck. I mean, this is his, what, his fifth football, the fourth football game. A uh, young man out of Mississippi, but he's been dynamite in that package for Jerry Kill. They could put anyone back. They could put probably the place kicker back there now and, and let him run it off tackle. He'll probably average five yards a carry. The offensive line has done an excellent job with entire slow down blocking. Now. Slow. You didn't say place kicker, did you? <laughs> slow down now. Let, let's not get carried away here. As uh, trying to run uh, that power play, uh, that straight isolation hand off as uh, Chad Spann uh, had that foot give way and couldn't get started right around the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up a fourth down here as his clock winds toward the 62nd mark inside Rynearson Stadium. Homecoming Saturday for Eastern Michigan here on ESPN Plus and hasn't been uh, a lot to write home about for the Eagles. With Doug Chapman, I'm Michael Regai, our producer Tom Domer and our director uh, Matt McCandlish. And all of our crew that has done a dynamite job for us here. Showing you Mid-American Conference football as Andy Dittbenner with that rugby kick. And he has had terrific success with that today, hadn't he? Keeping it away from either uh, DeAnthony White or um, here was Marvon Sanders. Dittbenner has uh, you know, been another weapon for Northern Illinois today. And again, I know, you know, Jeff Jennick put so much into trying to bounce back and uh, coming off what they thought was a good performance against Maryland. But when you look at Northern Illinois, we mentioned they lost two football games to Minnesota and up at Kalamazoo and Western Michigan by a total of seven points. But their defense has been superb. Now, last week it was Indiana State, a uh, football championship right. subdivision, a one double A squad. Right. But this week, I tell you what, they have been dominant, stout, and sturdy. This is definitely a statement game, but they're showing that this is this is how they play defense. They're showing the entire match. This is what they expect when you play Northern week in and week out. That's Terrence Blevins running hard between the tackles and 240 pound senior out of Denby High School on the east side of Detroit, a tradition rich program. As a matter of fact, a gentleman that had a long stay as a baseball coach at Northern Illinois, Mel Owens. Who is, uh, I still think, is around with the Calvary. He is head coach, baseball and basketball at Denby. 
His son Mel uh, played in the NFL after playing for Bo Schembechler in Michigan. Lemons on the carry and an EMU first down. I said Mel Owens, that son Walt Owens, of course, the uh, the head coach, and uh, Mel, his son, who grew up in DeKalb while uh, Walt was coaching baseball in Northern Illinois. Is first down picked up by Eastern Michigan as we uh, wind it toward the end of quarter number three. Yeah, you, you just wonder. It's, it's I mean, really hard to uh, make a definitive gauge as to if Kyle McMahon stayed in the football game, how Eastern would have performed. That's Ja'Cory Stone on that, uh, that catch. Andy Smith triggered his throw to Stone. With uh, this third quarter clock expiring. And now just 15 minutes of football left. We'll see what Eastern Michigan is able to put together as T.J. Lang, the outstanding left tackle, is injured. We'll check on him when we get back. It's been a big day for Tim McCarthy and Pico Brown in Northern Illinois with a 28-0 lead. One of every four teachers in Michigan earned a degree here. One of only two schools in the country to offer a master's degree in orthotics and prosthetics. One of only four universities in the country offering a polymers and coatings program. One of just two online integrated marketing communications programs in the country. One purpose. Eastern Michigan University, education first. It didn't really, it didn't really, it, it didn't really mess anything up. Just wet. And it looks like they get, it looks like they're coming back out. Well, now they uh, they actually put a second back on the clock. Is uh, what happened there uh, to uh, officially end the uh, the third quarter play? T.J. Lang was injured, so now we have uh, indeed expired the 15 minutes of quarter number three. So officially in the books is this third quarter. Northern Illinois with a 28 nothing lead. They'll go away fourth quarter coming up. Out of Ypsilanti in a moment. One of every four teachers in Michigan earned a degree here. One of only two schools in the country to offer a master's degree in orthotics and prosthetics. One of only four universities in the country offering a polymers and coatings program. One of just two online integrated marketing communications programs in the country. One purpose. Eastern Michigan University, education first. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? Come on, what's your secret? Would you take lessons? You got your own pro? Yep, I got a bunch of them. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Get 12 months of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow tips and techniques for just $14.97. Order today and receive this DVD absolutely free. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Looking for a high-interest CD? It's easy to find when you go to the right place. GMACBank.com. Where right now, our 12-month CD gives you one of the best rates available. So don't wait. Lock it in now at GMACBank.com and earn more while keeping your money safe and secure. Go to GMACBank.com today. GMAC Bank. Smart. Simple. Safe. What's my car X factor? Brakes, tires, oil, engine repair. I need someone who does it all and does it right. Get Car X brakes from just $89. That's $89 installed. Only at Car X. Weekdays, catch the game show that keeps it all in the family. Are you ready to play the field? It will surprise you. Something that you would do to prepare for a game of strip poker. It will shock you. I'm sure there's some women there. <laughs> and it will prove once and for all... Something that tires out your husband. Whose father knows less. Constant nagging. Watch America's favorite game show with host John O'Hurley. Seems pretty simple to me. We're gonna play. Family Feud, weekdays. Wah. Weekdays at 2 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. What's my car X factor? For my car repairs, I go to someplace I can trust. 
where they know my car and my name. Now get a 1999 oil change with a free tire rotation. Don't worry, call the car man. Fox Chicago's Push for the Pen and Special. Tonight after the Cubs Brewers game on Fox Chicago. Back to start quarter number four, and you're uh, indeed in tune with uh, Mac Football here on ESPN Plus, presented by Marathon Northern Illinois with a 28 nothing lead over Eastern Michigan. The Husky Dog is uh, yeah been fast and sturdy, and uh, as we take a look at our Marathon fast stats, almost six yards per play. Doug Chapman usually <laughs> is going to put you in pretty good stead going into a fourth quarter, and that's where Northern Illinois is right now. You know, and those are per play. Have been majority run plays, so that's almost averaging <laughs> six yards a carry, pretty much. Andy Smith's throw is uh, caught by Tyrone Burke. Uh, Burke, one of the uh, the young wide receivers, and uh, you know th this Eastern Michigan football team. You know, you you look at this ball club. Eleven true freshmen played a year ago. Thirteen redshirt freshmen more for Jeff Jennick. And as he was telling us about building your program and when you can redshirt and start to build a little bit depth along with it. Then uh, you know he believes that's the way to go here. You know, young football team you know, can, can sometimes if the kids aren't ready to play, you know, it can show on the field. So you try to get them playing experience, get them used to playing together. And, you know, you hopefully you don't take too many of these games like these. You know, they, they learn from more wins than losses, which is what you hope from the young guys. You see Andy Smith gunning uh, his throw and another grab for Jacory Stone. That's nine for 98 yards now for Jacory Stone. Man with all the numbers down in the truck, Tom Boschenik, Andrew Streeter with them up here, keeping us on time with all of the vitals today. Schmidt off play action. And that throw is juggled and then dropped by Tyrone Burke. Boy, closing down on that very quickly and uh, almost looking for uh, the potential of a pick there was Chase Carter. Let's see what kind of day it's been, Doug Chapman. Break down the work of Ja'Cory Stone, the young man from Glenville High School in Cleveland for Eastern Michigan. He's been pretty much the bright spot for this offense. They haven't gotten much going with passing, but the passes they have gotten going have been with him. You see Schmidt, him and hooked up all afternoon. He's caught a few balls over the middle, you know, caught a few balls towards the sideline. Hasn't really caught much deep. He's their go-to guy, but they haven't been able to get him isolated one-on-one -on -one and have Schmidt with enough time to deliver the football to him. It's been tough all afternoon. Yeah, real nice job out of the tape room uh, here today as we gave you a look at Ja'Cory Stone a moment ago. Andy Schmidt just came back and uh, connected with his throw to Tyler Jones. So Jones with that quick hit. Tim McCarthy, the middle linebacker on the stop. Uh, you know, you wonder if Northern Illinois is thinking here, hey, you know what, fourth quarter now, come. They want that shutout now and then you keep Eastern Michigan off the board. Oh, yeah, defenses love to put the goose egg on the board. You know, they can say they can hang their hat on that. And with the way Northern's playing, I wouldn't be surprised if they walk out of here with it. That is the fourth ball that Andy Schmidt has had deflected, knocked down around the line of scrimmage, attempting to throw today by this Northern Illinois front seven. Really been getting the job done. You know, hands if, up, Doug. If they're, if they're not getting, if they're not sacking him, you know, they're getting back to the quarterback. You see right there, Jake Kaufman gets his arm up, and then he bats that ball down. And that's what you teach you guys. If you can't get to him, you know, you try to pressure him. If you see he's letting that ball go, throw that big ball up and try to bat that ball down. Well, in the case of Jake Kaufman now, you're going, you know, not too deep, but someday three deep uh, on the depth chart that head coach Jerry Kill is playing. To Corey Stone uh, heard a lot of footsteps in traffic as uh, that stick came from Chase Carter, the cornerback. Jerry Kill's been telling us uh, this week that he's been their top player in the secondary, had a couple of pass interceptions in the 95-yard TD return last year. And uh, Chase Carter and Brad Pruitt have had big days on the corners for Northern Illinois. They're going to get the football back, and they're pitching a shutout over Eastern Michigan. We'll be right back. I know this drill. I rack up a big charge on my credit card. I get a tote bag. <laughs> well, actually, with our points program, you can get gift cards, flat screen TVs, even plane tickets. How do you get enough points for that? Oh, all kinds of ways. By using your debit card, your credit cards, checking account. I online. don't believe you. What? You're messing with me, right? No, I'm not messing with you. Can I still get the tote bag? Absolutely. It's not just banking. It's National City. What can I say? It's in my blood. Racing, the STP, it really gets me going. 
because Marathon Gasoline with STP provides extra cleaning power and helps maintain fuel economy? That's right. I see all Marathon Gas now contains STP additives. See y'all. Remember, pit road speed. Marathon, fuel in the American spirit. Marathon is proud to sponsor the 2008 MAC Championship on December 5th at Ford Field in Detroit. All right, who ate my volcano taco? <laughs> Don't look at me. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Was me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? Sooner or later, nature will show you its unpredictable side. But with features like vehicle stability assist, anti lock brakes, and available real time four wheel drive, the CRV was made for just such situations. Something new to crave the CRV. Get APR financing as low as 1.9% on 2008 Honda CRVs for well qualified customers. Early fourth quarter here, and it has not been a kind of pleasant homecoming Saturday that the folks here, the faithful of the Eastern Michigan Eagles, were hoping. Uh, take a look around uh, the Mid American Conference. Our Aldermark Max score with Ball State looking to go to 5 0, laying it on Kent State. We're at uh, Schumann Stadium in Muncie, Ohio, out of conference today against VMI with an early lead. And of course, you look at the rest of the numbers around the uh, Mid American Conference. Western Michigan with a big one on the road at uh, Lincoln Financial against Al Golden and Temple looking for their first win. Now the ground game, you know, for these final uh, 13 minutes plus will be uh, on display for Northern Illinois. Got a lake flag after that carry by tailback Chad Spann. And we'll see what uh, referee Stan Evans has. Personal foul, illegally grasping the face mask. On the defense, number 24. 15 yards are added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. You know, there's no more of that five yard face mask now. Every time you touch that face mask, it's 15 yards. So, I mean, that the Eastern Michigan is, they just keep shooting themselves. They don't, have, they don't have any feet left to shoot themselves in. They've just done it the entire afternoon. And attacking on 15 yards to a good run you know, is not going to help them at all. Oh, it's been that kind of day for Jeff Jennick. Well, you just wonder uh, what the uh, the thoughts are going through uh, the head man's mind here at Eastern Michigan. Now to the corner is Miko Brown as Brown dragged down by Daniel Holtzclaw as he uh, exploded inside the 30 and down near the Probably they'll put him down at the 27 yard line, but quite a day for Miko Brown as I think he might have gone over the 100 yard barrier on that carry for the first time in his career as of course his, uh, his best as a freshman had been 52 yards. 17 totes now for 111 yards for Miko Brown. Quite a day, Doug Chapman. A big day for this kid coming in. Like they, they've had success running the ball all afternoon. He's been the, 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 the leader on the ground. You know, he's a little nicked up right now. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but he's he's had a big day today. I'm, I'm looking for big things in this kid in the future. Oh, Jerry Kill out to check on Miko Brown. And we know that all of you around the Chicagoland area that are uh, Watching uh, the Northern Illinois Huskies and back football on WTWR, My 50 in Chicago, and of course uh, WTVO, My Network in Rockford. That, of course, uh, here in the uh, the Detroit area, along a, uh, a hotbed for college football on uh, WXYZ TV, Channel 7 in Detroit, just part of our ESPN Plus and uh, Mac Football Network. And Miko Brown being Assisted off the field by the uh, Huskies training staff here, but it's been a, a wonderful day for this young man from uh, Mississippi. You hate you hate to see that. You hate to see anyone get carried off the field, but you know, hope the doctors can look at him and say it's something where he'll be right back out there, if not next week and in the next coming weeks. You hate to see these kids go down. Well, Dan Nicholson back out to run his offense and uh, Ricky Kreider now the fourth tailback that Jerry Kill will employ today on the football field and Kreider on that cutback 
As he followed those blocks of uh, Eddie Adamski and that big crew on the offensive line and uh, Kreider working hard inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line to bring up a second and short after the eight yard carry for Ricky Kreider. I'm telling you, they can go out there and grab a, grab a cheerleader, put some pads on her, <laughs> line her up in the backfield, and I guarantee you she'll average five or six yards a carry behind this offensive line. Northern Illinois is completely blowing Eastern Michigan off the football up front. Yeah, the big fellas that do all of that uh, heavy toting on the offensive line have been superb today. Ricky Kreider will lower that shoulder and got stood up uh, off that left side. Or Eddie Adamski, that uh, that junior center, making his 28th uh, career start. You know, he graded out. Where's number 50? The man that uh, steps the football, makes all the line calls. He graded out at better than 80%. A year ago, did Eddie Adamski, the 280-pound junior. There's a good look at Eddie. You know, when you say graded out, graded out means with, with, when, when you watch game film, you know, you, you watch your positive plays versus your negative plays. And if you mm -hmm. and if eight out of your ten plays are positive plays, which is 80, which is plus 80 percent plus, that's that, that's a great game. And it starts with your center up front. When it comes to your blocking scheme, your protections, it all starts with that center. Well, they've been real good today as uh, Ricky Kreider got uh, taken down there by Daniel Holtzclaw. Holtzclaw in on the hit. Also got some help from uh, defensive end uh, Spencer Smith. But you look at this offensive line today and uh, you know Trevor Olson that redshirt freshman at the left tackle the three starters uh, Jason Anya Buaga Buaga the uh, the left guard Eddie Adamski we've mentioned the center and then John Brost who was the uh, the top performer there's uh, Jason Anya Buaga who got back at that left guard spot today. John Brost uh, where's number 60 there's big John the uh, the right tackle 300 pound senior. He was the top performer offensively. They, the Northern Illinois coaches gave him the top offensive performer, not just the offensive line, the whole offense uh, dug in the games against Western Michigan and Indiana State. And, and games like this, offensive linemen, they absolutely love these type of games where you just line up, mano a mano, smash mouth football. You just beat the guy up in front of you, pound him, let your running back pick a hole, get behind me, and get north and south. They love this. He's, all of these linemen are going to go back to DeKalb tonight and be proud of the way they played today. Now, Jerry Kill has played three quarterbacks this year. Chandler Harness, who was off to a wonderful start before being injured. And uh, now over there on uh, that left side is uh, that throw is to Britt Davis. So Davis has played a lot of football here in this Northern Illinois program, backing up Nathan Palmer. We haven't seen much of the redshirt freshman Palmer today. Who's been averaging 35 yards of reception, Nathan Palmer. But Britt Davis, who, uh, of course, one of the holdovers from Joe Novak's program, making that catch. And coming in now at the quarterback spot again is uh, Demarcus Grady. We've seen him. This will be the third snap he's taken. As you look at that Northern Illinois offense with just about 200 yards on the ground today. Quarterback draw to Marcus Grady, not this time. Didn't get going. Nice defensive play from that linebacking spot from Jermaine Jenkins. You know, even and Grady's even averaging six yards a pop out of the backfield, scrambling with the football. He's very dangerous with it. And you know, you know, when he pulls it down, the defense has to know his 80% chance he's gonna run it. They do a good job swarming him right there, getting him on the ground. And Dan Nicholson now coming right back in. And Demarcus Grady ran that one play. It's going to be a third down, and we'll we'll call it a short two. The line to make is uh, down around the seven-yard line. They got that stacked eye behind Nicholson. Now Nicholson will get the football off that left side, heading to the end zone. There's Justin Anderson. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. The first carry of the day for Justin Anderson. The fifth tailback that Jerry Kill has used this afternoon in a big, big day on the ground for Northern Illinois. You know, Justin Anderson in this game last year had 100 and over 160 yards. You know, he rushed over 1,200 yards last year, one of the leading rushers in the MAC. Doesn't touch the football, gets in the fourth quarter. What did I say? You put anyone back there, they're going to get yards. They plug him in late in the game, touchdown. Mike Salerno to add his fifth PAT of the afternoon. And uh, boy, this one has really gotten away from Eastern Michigan as Northern Illinois is coming to Ryan Earson Stadium and taking the Eagles to the woodshed. 
35 nothing Huskies when we get back. Fundamentals. <laughs> Technique. Fun. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Character. Excitement. Strengthening the foundation of college football. One kid. One kid. One kid. One kid at a time. Get your career cooking. Literally. Call an affiliate of the Cordon Blue Schools, North America. You can train as a culinary professional and work as a chef, pastry chef, restaurant manager, and more. Call now, and we'll send you this complimentary career guide. Operators are standing by. Call 800-719-0743. That's 800-719-0743. I don't know, maybe you should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. Huh? I, I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free good hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? Brighten up your home with new Westinghouse lights from Menards. This provincial pendant light has an excavated bronze finish with frosted glass, just $39. Or choose this three-light vanity, just $74. Update your floors with flooring that lasts a lifetime. All hardwood flooring from Floors of Distinction is on sale. It's a beautiful hardwood floor with easy snap-together installation, only $2.94 a square foot. Menards, dedicated to service and quality. Save big money at Menards. Well, it's been quite an afternoon for this Northern Illinois ground game, and this true freshman out of the state of Mississippi has been the uh, the bellwether, Miko Brown. Let's take a look at our late game analysis brought to you by Taco Bell. Make sure you think outside the bun. Uh, over 200 yards on the ground, Doug Chapman for Jerry Kill's offense, and they have continued now what they started to put together uh, last week against Indiana State. It's been a dominant performance. Dominant performance, but you know I go back to it. This is what they've always done here. Whether it was Coach Kill this year or, or Coach Novak that's been for the, the previous season before, they run the football and they run it well here. I mean, this is this is nothing brand new to people in DeKalb that are in Illinois that are familiar with NIU football, that they've always run the ball and run it very well here. Corey Welch from three yards deep is gonna come on out. And Welch will struggle to get across that 20 yard line. So with 923 left. Eastern Michigan uh, trying to put together a drive. They've been in Northern Illinois territory a few times today, but again, going back to the opening quarter, and it, you know, we've uh, repeated it, uh, trying not to hit you over the head with redundancy. But when Eastern Michigan lost Kyle McMahon, their starting quarterback today, and turned things over to this young man who has started 20 football games in the past two years, Andy Schmidt. But the offensive consistency continuity Doug just really hasn't been there this afternoon. I don't think it's redundant to, to keep harping on what McMahon's injury did to this this team today because as soon as he went down the team went down with them when you saw him on the sideline with a sling on his arm the entire team should have went over there because the offense completely shut down the team seemed like their morale dropped their spirits went down and they have not been able to get anything going on either side of the football since his injury. But partner, I got to tell you, as we look at him, man, I'm a little bit surprised because this, it, this isn't like a young man that's trotting out in a Division 1A football game, you know, for one of the first time or two in Andy Schmidt. We're talking about a guy who's been the starting quarterback of this football team for the last two years. You know, and, and Schmidt has a lot of ability. You know, you know, we've seen him. We've seen him play. Number 58 of the defense, personal foul, roughing the passer. That's 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, it was Mike Krause in Northern Illinois after Schmidt had uh, delivered the football. But, but, but getting back to Schmidt, you know, the kid can play. You know, we've seen him play sure last year. He, he started a lot of games yeah. here. But, you know, if, if he wasn't mentally prepared to start this week, I don't know how well he prepared himself for this football game. He's supposed to get mental reps when, you, when you're behind a guy. You know, maybe he... You know, maybe he wasn't ready to get out there and, and play. You know, maybe we'll see a different Schmidt next week. But today, offensively, they couldn't get anything going. 
Yeah, out of that spread formation, Corey Welch gets his uh, first carry of the afternoon. Welch, uh, give him seven as he's out over the 40-yard line. But all of that having been said, as Andy Smith, this uh, youngster out of St. John's, Michigan, up in the uh, the mid part of the Wolverine States, trying to put some points on the board. Make no mistake, this Northern Illinois defense today against Jeff Jennigsel has been about as rock solid as you want to imagine. Corey Welch with a burst again. Welch dragged down by Melvin Rice, the cornerback. Flags flying more. What you don't want to see in a game that's already decided is you know, things start to get out of line here in terms of uh, physical play after a whistle's blown, Doug. You know, good run by Welch. They needed something like that earlier, but you definitely don't want to see a lot of flags late in the game. Frustration or either guys just letting after up. After the play was over, dead ball personal foul on the defense number four. 15 yards are added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. And, and a lot of times you get, you know, right now, Northern Illinois has put a lot of substitutes in the game that don't play a lot. And they're getting in at the back end of a blowout, and they're just so jacked up to get in there. Sometimes they they're, they're overly aggressive. They still gotta have to remember just because you haven't played the entire game, still, you know, play within the rules. You know, you don't don't make silly penalties because it makes not, not just yourself, makes your team look bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you're already up 35 nothing. You know, you know all the un, all the extra stuff is definitely not necessary. Now that was David Bryant at uh, that free safety secondary played very very well today, but very aggressive in attacking the football. Smith gunning that throw. To Corey Stone looked like there might have been contact from behind as Melvin Rice might have arrived a little bit early. Let's see as we'll take a look at it uh, from uh, behind to Corey Stone. And I tell you, I'm very impressed with the Northern Illinois defensive backs. And you see Rice, he gets there. But still, I mean, there's two guys in the vicinity. No receivers have been running scot-free, wide open. They've been blanketed to the entire afternoon. They have, there have been small windows for Schmidt or even when McMahon was in early to put the football in. Northern Illinois has not given Eastern Michigan anything offensively. You can uh, just imagine with the defense playing this well, might this be start of uh, not only the Jerry Kill era, but something very significant for Northern Illinois. A lot of pressure on Andy Schmidt, and down he goes. Well, Andy Schmidt was uh, greeted rather rudely as... Uh, D.J. Perkle, who wears number 98, in on that hit. Craig Rush, who wears 99, and linebacker Corey Hansen on the hits. You know, you could have listed four or five guys, you know, four or five more guys. There were so many white shirts over here. It looked like the whole team was on him, but, I mean, it just seems like they, they really just can't get anything. They, they've tried everything. Boot, play action, waggle. The shotgun under the center. They tried to run. Pat, nothing is working this afternoon at all. And this Eastern Michigan offense now has been good through the first four games of the year. I mean, they really have. They put up uh, 52 against Indiana State. Corey Welch on that inside draw. And Welch will be uh, popped by Melvin Rice along with Larry English. But you notice about Northern Illinois, always three or four Huskies around the football. They've got that gang tackling mentality, Doug. You know, and, and you know, this is a team, they won two games last year, you know. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys, especially the juniors and the seniors, the upperclassmen, were probably just, they, they didn't like the way that felt. You know, this is a program that's been proud. They've got a lot of tradition here. They've won. And I'm sure they came in this year with a different swagger, new head coach, you know, new mentality. And, I'm, and I, I think right now they're letting the entire conference know, and the nation know, they can play defense up here, and they play tough defense. Fourth down and nine now. Another fourth down facing Andy Smith. Pressure coming. Smith will put the football down and come up short of that first down. He got to the 25, but that was it. Tim McCarthy, excellent defensive day for the young man from Neno, Wisconsin. Already has had a pick today and in on a lot of hits for Northern Illinois. You know, McCarthy's been active. He had the interception. He's been in a lot of tackles. And, you know, when your defense is flying around, your linebackers are all over the field and, and getting into their drops and, and, and getting on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. You're going to have your guys with double-digit tackles or make a lot of plays like McCarthy has had. That young man has had a great afternoon. And, and right now, hey, Northern Illinois' defense right now <laughs> looks pretty daggone tough. Well, they do. That's what I'm saying. This may be starting uh, something of a signature proportion here for uh, Jerry Kill and his program. Demarcus Grady in at quarterback. This is Justin Anderson on the carry, the tailback. And uh, Anderson got uh, taken to the ground as uh, that hit came from Eastern Michigan's at Chris May. Uh, 
the defensive back. Oh, Justin Anderson who just uh, rumbled in for the touchdown a moment ago. And again, this young man, second team all Mac a year ago, just absolutely tore up Eastern Michigan for 168 yards on the ground in DeKalb. And uh, yet, uh, really, is uh, now Anderson coming off the football field. When you look at it, Montel Clanton, Miko Brown, Ricky Kreider, and Chad Spann, four tailbacks, saw the football field today before Anderson got in. I guess shows how, a lot of depth. That shows how deep they are, exactly. That's a lot of depth, exactly. to be sure. The Marcus Grady with that throw that uh, is caught. And uh, on the catch is Marcus Lewis. So Demarcus Grady, whose uh, cousin is uh, Kevin Grady, the tailback that's uh, just uh, over at uh, about five miles from here, the big house in Ann Arbor, getting ready to go for uh, the Michigan Wolverines against Wisconsin today in Big Ten play. But this young man uh, was very, very uh, highly touted prospect in this Northern Illinois program. Well, look at all the. There's your five tailbacks. Oh yeah, look at this. They, 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 they've run the they've run the ball at will. Everybody has Justin Anderson just uh, that, that that power football behind uh, again Eddie Adamski the center and Dan Keller and Jason Anye Buagu the guards Anderson on the carry. that first down and, uh, you know, and that's the most demoralizing part you know, they didn't do anything fancy Eastern knew what was coming they lined up like lined up and just ran completely over top of Eastern Michigan the entire afternoon nothing fancy no no trickery except for the one reverse on the one yard line but besides that they've just been north and south hanging their head on the run and they won six of the last seven six in a row until they were short-circuited last year against eastern michigan justin anderson lowering the boom as he crossed the 40-yard line out to the 44. the starting tailback today D'Amico brown and uh, brown had quite the afternoon miko brown rather the young man from Mississippi. Let's take a look at his afternoon's work over 100 yards, Doug. Uh, Miko Brown, a, a smaller back, quicker, very electrifying when he gets the football. He gets the ball, makes quick cuts, gets north and south. And you see right here, he takes the handoff, stretches it, gets upfield. It's a little nicked up. Look, there's nothing serious. This is big one right here. Untouched until he gets to the end zone. Halfway in the end zone, he gets touched. He had a big afternoon today. Back live, another carry for uh, Justin Anderson, second team all Mac performer from a year ago, our GMAC player of the game, Miko Brown, a career high 111 yards on his uh, carries of the football with the touchdown today. Welcome to the Mid American Conference, Miko Brown. Did you have a day like that as a freshman? Are oh, you were playing in the secondary as a freshman? You were a DB. Yeah, well, I came in as a DB, <laughs> but then they, you know, I, I kind of, you know, debated. Mickey Matt, you told Mickey Matthews, now the coach of James Madison, terrific head coach. You gotta let me run the football, coach. You got he got you over the other side of the ball. And it worked out pretty well. <laughs> it worked out pretty well. Yes, it did indeed. Although Mickey Matthews ball. might say. Ball start. Number 72 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Mickey Matthews might say I'd, uh, I, I wanted to keep Chapman on, on my side of the football. What Jim Donnan would have none of that? Yeah, they you know they, they brought me in as a safety. I was about a, a buck sixty, soaking wet, you know. And I you know I played running back in high school, it was all state, you know, and but I I wanted the ball. You know, so I, I begged him and begged him and got over there and mm -hmm. I worked I, I think I did pretty good over there. I think you did, not, but much not too to bad. the dismay of defensive coordinator Mickey Matthews, who wondered <laughs> what might have been. Demarcus Grady. Got that throw on the money as it's caught by Evans Adonis, the uh, the senior out of Southwest High in Miami, Florida. As uh, you see the uh, the hit that was made on uh, Evans Adonis. That's going to bring up a fourth down with a uh, couple of yards to go. The Marcus Grady's a good-looking young quarterback. You know, when Chandler Harnish. Man, as we said, who uh, was uh, had the sustained the uh, foot sprain after he started the first two games of the year, he got hurt in the Western Michigan game, and then uh, Dan Nicholson, the senior, came out. But you think of Chandler Harness, the youngster, the Marcus Grady. Wow, I mean, hey, this Northern Illinois uh, signal calling position is in very good hands here for the next few years. They definitely are, you know, and 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 I think each quarterback brings a different different element to this to this spread style of offense. You know, you have. You know, you, you have Nicholson, who's kind of a mixture of the two guys. Harness is more of a precision passer. 
And, you know, Grady, can, he's more of the electrifying, you know, can get it done with his legs just as well as he can do it with his arms. So they're in good position. They're in great shape, actually, on offense right now. Northern Illinois is. All right, uh, with this fourth down coming up, uh, timeout for Northern Illinois as uh, we approach the two-minute mark. All right, before we uh, see this, I'm assuming this uh, punt of the football for Northern Illinois, let's take our final time out. We'll be right back to Ryan Nearson Stadium in this big Northern Illinois day. Looking for a high interest CD? It's easy to find when you go to the right place. GMACBank.com. Where right now our 12 month CD gives you one of the best rates available. So don't wait. Lock it in now at GMACBank.com and earn more while keeping your money safe and secure. Go to GMACBank.com today. GMAC Bank. Smart. Simple. Safe. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-Sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-Sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-Sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-Sports.com. 6,800 student athletes, 1.7 million fans, 34 world champions, college ball games, where everybody wins. Brought to you by the Football Bowl Association. Unconventional. If you're wrong, he'll end up with no hands and no feet. Uncaring. Technically, if I'm wrong, you'll end up dead, but I take your point. Unbelievably brilliant. You, you, you. When your life is at stake. When nobody knows anything, huh? Then how is it you always think you're right? I don't. I just find it hard to operate on the opposite assumption. He's your best bet. See, it is shocking. House, the cure for the common weekend. Sundays at 5 on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. This afternoon's ESPN Plus Mac football matchup between Northern Illinois and Eastern Michigan has been brought to you by Marathon. They're fueling the American spirit. Also by Champion. It's how you play. By National City Official Bank of the Mid-American Conference. By our good friends at GMAC, their proud sponsor of the 10th anniversary GMAC Bowl. Also by Automart.com. Shop smart, buy well. And by First Energy. Our energy is working. For you. Homecoming Saturday uh, hasn't had a lot to shut about here uh, for the uh, the green and white of Eastern Michigan, all Northern Illinois today, late fourth quarter. Glad you're part of it on ESPN Plus alongside Doug Chapman and all of our terrific crew here in Ypsilanti. I'm Michael Regai. As uh, Andy Dittbenner is going to boot this football away. Marvon Sanders back in that. Uh, that deep spot letting the football uh, trickle its way down near the five yard line. Dick Benner has had a wonderful afternoon putting punts down inside the 20 today for just another field uh, weapon and advantage in turning the field over for Northern Illinois. You know, you know, when it rains, it pours, you know, that's what they say. And, and defensively, they haven't been able to stop Northern Illinois. Offensively, they haven't been able to move the ball against Northern Illinois. And then the icing on that cake is when every punt has backed them up in poor field position. So with them not being able to do much on offense and then having to start from the bad five, six yard line field position they've been getting the two entire fouls game. On the play, both of which are dead ball, personal Terrible. fouls. After the play is over, by rule those penalties offset, it's first down. Had a lot of the, of the dead ball personal fouls uh, here in the fourth quarter because this one's gotten out of hand of course and we're going to get a new quarterback in as Andy Schmidt has got the uh, the headset on Jason Williams the red shirt freshman there's Jason Williams where's number 12 6 3 He's said to have uh, have a, a possess a very uh, strong arm 
Out of the Dayton, Ohio area, Miamisburg High School. He's got two minutes to see if he can get his football team on the board uh, from uh, 94 yards away. And he'll stay on the ground with Corey Wells, well stacked up. While we got a second here, certainly want to thank uh, Sports Information Department's Bow School, Donna Turner at uh, Northern Illinois, and of course, Jim Streeter uh, here at Eastern Michigan for all of their help. Our uh, man with the numbers up here, Andrew Streeter today. Diane Newland, thank you. Chuck Allen up here in the booth. Ray Rolak, our spotter. All of the terrific crew, and uh, that is going to just uh, put the capper on the afternoon as Jason Williams is taken down in the end zone for the sack as DJ Perkle put the heat on Williams and took the youngster down for the safety in the end zone for Northern Illinois. You know, it's just not Eastern Michigan's day. You know, when stuff like that happens, it just, you know, it's just, it's just not your day. You know, and then, you know, the, the, this, this team has to take this loss, get angry over it, be angry today, be angry tonight, and then Monday when they go back to work, they've got to put it behind them because these are the type of losses that can derail a team's entire season or can motivate you to turn your season around. Mm -hmm. They've got to decide what they want to use this game as today. Oh, Jason Williams uh, with a couple of snaps. Uh, the uh, the redshirt freshman out of Miamisburg High School down in Dayton and uh, took that safety. Oh, for Jeff Jenick, it uh, you know, has been one of those afternoons, and uh, you know after a strong week of practice, Doug, you, you, Met with Jeff Jenick yesterday, and his, his facility has uh, just expanded uh, very, very nicely here with so many renovations uh, in Ypsilanti. And you know the head coach didn't see one like this coming this afternoon. No, you never see one coming. You know when, you know when your when your starting quarterback goes down early, and he's, it kind of throws your offense out of rhythm. You know you don't expect things like that. You know, Northern got a couple early calls to go their way. You know a couple calls that could have went either or. And, you know, Northern, it was, just, it was just Northern Illinois' day. I think the ball was just rolling in their favor, and it's just been downhill ever since for Eastern Michigan. Yeah, now that free kick is going to come from uh, Patrick Trepa from the 20-yard uh, line. You have your choice. You can uh, kick it away uh, via the tee, or you can punt it away on the free kick. Trepa's going to do that. will put that left foot to it, and Marcus Perez has signaled for a fair catch at the 33-yard line. Speaking of Marcus Perez, uh, he's been in the end zone once today on a reverse as uh, we take a look at Northern Illinois and a part of their five-touchdown effort today. And Marcus Perez on the reverse, Doug Chapman, inside the five-yard line, which you don't see too often, but it got him six. You definitely don't see that. It's, it's one of those deals where if your offense coordinator calls it and doesn't work, he might be looking for a job the next day. <laughs> but if it does work like that, you get a good pat on the back. So you know, it, was a, it was a great play, great job by him staying in bounds, keeping his balance, getting the ball across the pylon. But it's just been that type of day for Northern. Everything they've done has worked. First energy play of the game, Justin Anderson trying to uh, power out some tough yards. Got seven more, just adds to this impressive total. We may uh, just have one more snap, maybe two, and then this one will be put in the books. And if you're Northern Illinois next week, got to go see Rocky Top down in Knoxville, Tennessee. While the boats come in on the water, and that's a struggling program. Jerry Kill is going to take a highly inspired football team uh, down to take a look at the Tennessee Volunteers. An inspired team that now has a little bit of swagger. They post a shutout, play some great defense, and can run the football. You can run the ball. I don't care who you're playing. You have a chance to win every football game and play defense. You can beat anybody you want. Uh, Justin Anderson, look at that backup offensive line. Uh, Moving that pile, and uh, well, with 41 seconds left, that's probably going to be the final snap of the day. They can let the uh, the 40 burn out if they want to, and uh, we'll see if uh, referee Stan Evans will uh, let it go with that. The last time Northern Illinois recorded a shutout a couple years ago, right here at Rynearson Stadium uh, when Garrett Wolf and the gang shut out Eastern Michigan. With the clock running, this will be your final snap. DeMarcus Grady takes a knee. Now that is some kind of road performance today for 
Jerry Kill and his Northern Illinois Huskies. We sit now 17 and 9 going back the last five years on the road in Mid American Conference play. You know, in a statement game, you know, a conference game, you know, they go on the road in front of a hostile environment and they come out not just with a win, but they post a goose egg. Goose egg 37 to nothing. And the way they won, they lined up and ran the ball down Eastern Michigan's throat. It's a statement football game. Played great defense. They, Northern looked very, very good today. Very good. Oh, Jerry Kill with his uh, first win as uh, the head coach in the MAC at Northern Illinois. They go to two and two now. And uh, remember the two football games they've lost at Minnesota and at Western Michigan by a total of seven. They were absolutely dominant today. Were the Huskies a 37 nothing road win over Eastern Michigan, spoiling a homecoming Saturday and ending the homecoming uh, streak of victories at three. For Eastern Michigan is T.J. Lang, that outstanding offensive tackle, having to uh, feel the sting of a big day from that young man, Miko Brown. He puts together his first 100-yard-plus rushing game together with the touchdown as Eastern uh, Michigan gets a uh, kind of put to him today by Northern Illinois, and we are joined by the first-year head coach Jerry Kill, Jerry. Michael Rega alongside Doug Chapman. I got to tell you, very, very impressive from your group. We were especially impressed by how stout and sturdy that defensive 11 was for you, Jerry, all day long. Well, I'm re real proud of, uh, you know, Coach Clays and the defensive staff done a great job today. And, you know, you always win this whole game with defense. You got to tackle and you got to play well on that side of the ball. And anytime you can shut out a, a football team with their offensive firepower, that, that you, you got to give the credit to the kids and, and those coaches on that side of the ball. Jerry, going to the other side of the ball, we were kind of teasing a little bit in the fourth quarter. I mean, you got five tailbacks out there running the football today. I mean, Justin Anderson, who's over a 1,200-yard ground gainer, comes off the bench in the fourth quarter. I would say you've got some stockpile of talent at that position, Jerry. Well, I, I, that's the number one question every week who we're going to play at tailback. So I guess I added to that controversy this week. But uh, it, it's good to have those people because you know as in college football, it's so physical, you better have a stockpile of tailbacks. Now to follow up, Coach, how impressed are you with your offensive line today? Well, it, it's the best performance we've had. You know, that's somebody we challenged to step up. We felt they needed to step up, and they did. Uh, Jerry, now you you know you step out of conference play again, but you know Doug and I were talking about maybe this is a, a significant statement win for you and your program early. I mean, look, Joe Novak's program's been great on the road in MAC play. You know that. You beat him last year in in DeKalb, but but how strong could this be in going forward for the ball club? Well, it's certainly it's certainly a big win. I, I I would tell you it's a lot easier to be two and two, and we played the other two games very close. And and to find a way to win on the road, it, it doesn't matter where you go. It's hard to win on the road, but so it's it's a very good win. Very impressive, Jerry Kill. We appreciate it. Welcome to the Mid American Conference. Thanks for the time, and uh, we're excited about good things happening in DeKalb with your football program. Thank you very much, and we appreciate everything. All right, that's Jerry Kill, the head football coach of the Huskies of Northern Illinois. 37 nothing on the road as they go to 17 and nine in MAC road games in the last six years. All right, don't go away. Doug and I will come back and wrap this baby up out of Ypsilanti. That's next right here on ESPN+. Plus. 13 progressive universities. Six diverse states. 23 sponsored championships. More than 100 academic All-American athletes. 11 college Hall of Fame coaches. Millions of dedicated fans. One great conference. The Mid-American Conference. The new mark of excellence. Don't be afraid of the pump. The new Accord from Honda. Go to shophonda.com to build and price your own fuel-efficient Accord. It is uh, securely in the books as a 37-0 shutout win for Northern Illinois over Eastern Michigan as we bring you back to uh, Rynearson Stadium. You know, this 2008 Mid-American Conference football season, it is so many players like the talents you saw today who 
not only are team leaders, but uh, certainly stand out when the bright lights of Mac football are ready to go. Let's uh, swing it to Mike Gleason with a look at five of these special talents from around the Mac. Mike, it's all yours. Nate Davis, the junior quarterback who leads the Cardinals' explosive offense, already ranks third in Ball State history for career passing yards. He owns the Ball State career record for touchdown passes with 48. Ranks third in Ball State history for most passes attempted with 723. And third for most passes completed with 420. Kent State's Eugene Jarvis is a 5-foot, five 5-inch five scat back who plays hard and delivers a great run on every down. He's on the 2008 Maxwell Award list. Jarvis earned first-team All-Mac honors and was named Honorable Mention All-American by SI.com and CollegeFootballNews.com. Dan Lefevre is one of the most athletic quarterbacks in Central Michigan history. Last season, he was named the 2007 Mac Offensive Player of the Year, and he's a two-time All-Mac first-team member. He's the 24th player in Central Michigan history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. Northern Illinois' Justin Anderson was named a second-team All-Mac after recording the school's ninth consecutive 1,000-yard rushing season. He pounds the ground and set an NIU record for running backs with 45 receptions, catching passes in 10 consecutive games. Drew Willing, the senior quarterback for the Buffalo Bulls, is a strong leader, has set a new mark for completions with 258 in a season, and had the highest pass efficiency rating in school history. Willing needs 2,035 yards to set the career passing mark at Buffalo. All right, Mike, Lisa, we appreciate that. Just to look at uh, a few that, well, a lot of those guys have already made major impacts in the Mid-American Conference. Michael Regai alongside Doug Chapman. Uh, wow, I don't think anybody saw this coming today. This 37 to nothing blitzkrieg that Northern Illinois put on Eastern Michigan. So it ends Eastern Michigan's run of three straight homecoming wins going back to the 2005 football season. But Doug, let's take a look at some of the numbers here. And because you know, a lot of times numbers lie, not today, some dominance from Northern Illinois. Dominance is the key word. They rushed for over 230 yards, do not turn the ball over, as opposed to Eastern Michigan's two turnovers. I mean, the average start where they started their drives, everything. I mean, tackles for loss six. You look, they could be more columns, more categories. They probably dominated in, in any category imaginable. And it just wasn't Eastern Michigan's day. Yeah, I think the thing that was impressive about this, don't forget Chandler Harnish, their starting quarterback, uh, was down, injured in the Western Michigan game. Now, yes, they have the veteran Dan Nicholson, but Matt Simon, their outstanding uh, senior receiver, not able to go today. So you take a couple of key components out offensively, but this one really, though, was actually punctuated by the Northern Illinois defense. It was absolutely remarkable the way they flew around to the football all day. Every time you saw the football, you saw four or five white shirts around it. Northern Illinois was in Eastern Michigan's backfield. They pressured the quarterback. They did everything possible. The defensive backs blanketed the receivers. Receivers could not get off of coverage. Eastern Michigan couldn't get anything going today on offense. Nothing. No, they didn't, and it led to the Northern Illinois uh, shutout win. As we said, the first shutout they've had dating back to a couple of seasons ago right here at Rynearson Stadium. We say we take a look uh, at the other goings on around the Mid-American Conference and uh, Ball State has improved to 5 and 0. Oh. Well, look at uh, Nate Davis through for 265 yards and a touchdown. Ohio's at a tight one out of conference with VMI. Kind of thought Western Michigan's trip into Philadelphia against Temple would be difficult. Low scoring game at halftime right now for Bill Kubitz football team. Akron is uh, about ready to host Cincinnati and then we'll flip it over and uh, Buffalo and Central Michigan have a big one going on right here in the state of Michigan. Uh, and that'll start uh, at four o'clock today as Central Michigan looks to rebound from that uh, that uh, tough overtime loss against Purdue last week. You know, and, and, and it's tough to lose those games, but Central Michigan with Dan Lefevre, they've got a talented, talented offense. I look, I look for them to bounce back. The MAC is going to be a very competitive league this year. All right, so uh, here today, the final is 37 0 Northern Illinois over Central Michigan. And, and again, now going forward, Jeff Jennett quickly, Doug, uh, he's got to get his football team back up and ready to go. 37 0. They've got to forget about this, move on, have a tough week of practice. They've got to move past this. For Northern Illinois, they're going to Rocky Top to see Tennessee next week, and they'll go now 2 and 2 overall. So that's going to do it this afternoon from Rynearson Stadium where Northern Illinois has uh, registered a uh, most resounding 37-0 win 
over Eastern Michigan. Now for our producer Tom Domer, director Matt McCandless, and for all of the very talented and terrific crew that I've mentioned here a couple moments ago. For my partner Doug Chapman, I'm Michael Regai. Uh, bidding you a wonderful Saturday night from Rynearson Stadium in Ypsilanti, Michigan, Northern Illinois, with a shutout win over Eastern Michigan. So long, everybody. They say you never forget your first time. Well, let's see what you've learned. On Wisteria Lane, it's always better the second time. So how are you?